Welcome to the sixth episode of the second season of the Knights of Everflame. I'm Jason Bullman, your host and GM for this adventure. Is everybody here ready to play? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, that didn't sound very ready. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Let's get rolling. When we last left our intrepid band of adventurers, the group of you were in Canarite, having just seen the end of one lucky long finger, a rather gruesome end that he suffered, uh, his torso torn open as some ball of chain and blood came emerging out of him and vanished off into the shadows, leaving behind only one mysterious clue, a dagger, the pommel of which ends in a single link of chain. Moments after the guards swarmed the warehouse where you found Lucky and his cultists and uh, arrested the lot of you. <laughs> they weren't in the mood to ask questions right then. Everyone got arrested and taken in for questioning. You were taken uh, to the central Watts station in Canterate, and there, stripped of all of your gear, you were questioned for hours and hours on end uh, before eventually uh, the guards, especially Captain DeGrell, came to let you free thanking you for helping the city of Canterate, uncovering this nefarious plot to auction off undead and uh, this mysterious cult that was located in the heart of its warehouse district. DeGrell also pointed out that the dagger that you recovered bore the symbol of Zan Kuthan, a deity that is outlawed in the city of Canterate, and in fact, in all of Malthun. Zan Kuthan is a, a vile deity of darkness and envy and loss. Why this dagger was here, why it was in the hand of Lucky, you know more of that picture than they did. Knowing that Lucky had been using these daggers to assassinate artists, poets, writers throughout the years, including, apparently, Iculus's father. DeGrell let you free, but warned you that this dagger could not remain in the city. And uh, should you wish, uh, they would take it to find out more about it. But since you were tied so uh, to its history and to its fate, that the watch captain would allow you to take it to Doommark, a city in, uh, or rather a large town, in western Molthun. In Dumark, you were to speak with the Lord of Ravens, uh, and she uh, would possibly be able to tell you more about it. You spent a few days resting, recuperating. Uh, your patron gave you a princely uh, reward for securing her son's painting, and you were able and put you up in the Platinum Whisper, a fine uh, in an establishment for almost an entire week so that you might rest and recuperate. The entire group leveled up, did some shopping, and got themselves ready for more adventure. From there, you left Canterate behind, traveling west along the Nosum River. You made your way along the Menador Mountains, heading uh, further and further to the west, to the town of Doommark. Arriving there, you found the place, um, well, to be honest, rather infested with ravens. Uh, these these birds were literally everywhere in town, and uh, you didn't make it very far in before you ran into a beggar, uh, a woman by the name of Quellig, uh, who was a bit odd and unusual. You later found out that she is a fetchling, uh, um, 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 a person born of both shadow and light. They're, they're, they live between. Quellig offered to take you to the Lord of Ravens, so you made your way towards the rookery in the center of town, but not... Uh, before Linnaeus saw the strange noble, this pale nobleman who has been watching her. She's not the only one who's seen this mysterious figure. But every time you try and find him, get some sense of him, he seems to be nowhere to be seen. Arriving at the rookery, um... You promptly made your way inside and down into the basement, and there you met uh, the general lord, Francine Maga, the lord of ravens. She welcomed you uh, 
into her abode uh, deep beneath the rookery uh, and uh, seemed to know an awful lot about you. In fact, knew who you were, why you were there before you even walked in the room. Uh, this shouldn't come as any surprise. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the folks in Canary described her as their, you know, their eyes and ears out here. She is their spy master. And uh, she immediately wanted to see the dagger that you had brought to her. Fascinated by it, um, but also a little afraid. It was, such daggers were only a myth, a rumor. She had scant knowledge on their purpose, on their existence. And uh, upon looking at it, confirmed that it was indeed what she believed to be was known as a soul rend dagger. She honestly wasn't quite sure what it was used for. I mean, obviously the name implies that it steals or rends souls from the body. But beyond that, the cult of Zan Kuthan, who treasures these blades, um, keeps them a very closely guarded secret, especially about their history and purpose. She, the Lord of Ravens had never actually even seen one in person. But <clears throat> she had a way that you might learn more. She said it would be dangerous, but it would give you the answers you seek. She retrieved from a safe behind her, her, her bookcase um, a lantern that she called the Lantern of Lost Light. And she said that through this lantern, you would be transported into the plane of shadow. And there you could use the dagger, cat bathing in that light, to travel along its history and to summon the history of the dagger. You gathered around the table as she lit the lantern and sent you into the shadows. There, clutching the dagger, you are flung back thousands of years to an event called Earthfall. When the surface world of Galarian was turned into darkness, when a a star fell from the sky and rained devastation on the world. Empires crumbled in that cataclysm. Some sunk beneath the waves, some died in the winter that came after, the winter that would never end. You were in the middle of the plains with a gentle, horse-loving people. The horse lords there were frightened, terrified of the fire that fell from the sky. And in that darkness, they crawled to a rent, a tear in the earth that led into unfathomable darkness. And there they prayed. They prayed for deliverance from the dark. And chains snaked out of that void and bound them. One long chain. And a voice demanded their servitude. They agreed. They accepted eternal damnation just so that they might live, so that their precious horses might survive. The chain fell from them, and those links were swept away through the passage of time, only to find their way into some blasphemous cathedral. There, a smith would reach into the flames of his forge with his bare hands and draw forth daggers, red hot, the metal scorching his flesh. And he would take these links and bind them to the daggers, each one to a single dagger. And he would take those daggers and lay them on a table. From there, the daggers were delivered to agents such as Lucky. Secreted out of Nadal, they were used for assassinations. You followed a different dagger. You followed the dagger that killed Iculus' father. They were all tied together, and you could see their history. Witnessing that grim moment again nearly broke your champion. And in the darkness, the shadows surged forth to destroy you. Fighting them off was a difficult task, especially after one of them pulled Omelette's shadow away and it became a free-willed thing. But you managed to prevail, sending the shadows back into the darkness. From there, there was one last scene for you to see. That was the dagger being returned 
to this cathedral, this cathedral outside of that very crack in the earth that leads into darkness. And in that cathedral, Lucky returned the daggers to the priest and he took them back to the forge. Their souls inside them. You had seen the souls sucked into the blades. Whenever one was used, it was brought back to the cathedral. The dagger bearing the soul of Iculus' father was in Lucky's possession. And he brought it back to that forge where it was heated and forged back into the chain, the ever-growing chain of souls. And with each hammer blow closing the link, you could hear him cry out in agony. His soul locked in that link, bound in shadow, never to see the light again. That was the prayer. And the chain was taken up into the museum along with other sacred relics of Zonkuthan. And there it was placed upon an altar, a place of worship. The Lord of Raven spoke to you there. She said, she knows this place. She knows where that chain is. It is in Ridwan, the holy city of Zonkuthan inside Nadal in the land of shadows. And that's where we ended. With a snap. You are back in the Lord of Raven's abode. She looks to all of you. She looks to you. I'm so sorry. Yes, it was uh, not an easy thing to witness again. I cannot imagine what that must be like. She stands up and lifts the lantern, its oil now expended, and returns it to her safe. She comes back to the group of you sitting at the table Ravens kind of swirling around. Some come and join, some leave. She looks at all of you and says, what will you do? I cannot allow my father's soul to rot in some dark hell. Can we go to Ridwan? <laughs> this is not your responsibility. No, but you're our family. <laughs> We're not going to abandon you. I feel I cannot ask you to do something so dangerous. You don't have to ask. Yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, don't get rid of us that easily. Couldn't stop me if you tried. Besides, yeah, you, you did try. <laughs> definitely will not survive if you go alone. I mean, you are very strong, but you are stronger if we are all together. That's true. The Lord of Ravens leans back. <laughs> You've got Moxie. Ridwan is a fortress city. It is the holy place of Zankuthan. It is the place where his influence is strongest in this world. Perhaps Pengale is equally as powerful. It is the capital of Nadal, and most of his worshippers are there, including the Black Triune. The, the Black Triune? What is that? They are the three horse lords that accepted the deal. Oh. They are still alive? Yes. It has been thousands of years, but yes. Would you call it life? <laughs> they are still alive. I read about them as a child. Black Triune. That is definitely a dread prospect. We but should probably do all we can to avoid them. Fortunately, Ridwan is significantly closer than that. From here, it is only a few days' ride to the west. But the only way there is through the Umbral Basin. Huh. I do not envy you that journey. Only the desperate make their way between that pass. I really want to know who names these places. <laughs> it did not always have that name. I imagine it didn't. You. No, no, no. It earned that name. Just like Last Wall, which is now the Gravelands. And how did that happen? 
when when the bargain was struck and the entire nation was covered in a blanket of darkness and shadow the sun has not shone on nadal in thousands of years the umbral basin is the edge of that darkness racked by storms of shadow and darkness and i do mean storms it comes upon you those who are unlucky are sucked into it, never to be seen from or heard again. Worse still are some of the things that prowl in that dark that seem that are predators from the plane of shadow unleashed on this world. Fortunately, out here in the light, they do not dare tread. Do you have any suggestions on what we can do to forge through without any danger? <laughs> Traveling through the Umbral Basin, there is no guarantees. The, the place is unsafe, even for the most experienced traveler. Merchants will only take that pass if they are truly desperate or incredibly skilled at navigating it. This late in the year, there will be no travelers making that way. Do you... Have a map? As best as there can be one, yes. On the other side of the uh, Umbral Basin, you must then pass through the Weeping Fields, a <laughs> plain of jagged rock. The only plants and vegetation, things that have learned to live in the gloom and dark. That is the broken place that surrounds Ridwan. Ridwan, even my best spies must spend months and perhaps even years before they can penetrate that place. It is a place for the faithful of Zan Kuthan, for those who venerate pain and envy and loss. They are not exactly the most pleasant of company. And there at the center of it is a place only known as the Shadow Flame Cathedral. That is the place you saw, I believe. For it stands directly before that awful tear in the world. That place that touches the plane of shadow that goes directly to his domain. And that's the place where all the souls are kept. Inside the cathedral, yes. If the vision we saw is to be true. Is there a reason why it wouldn't be? She shrugs. The vision that was shown to us was true as it was at that moment. Is the chain still there this day? She shrugs. The lantern does not reveal all. It only reveals those moments of importance, those moments of power. Do you have a temple to Serenre here? There's a shrine. I think we are going to need all the light we can get. Yes. Mm. Also some rest, I think. I don't think we should try to go anywhere today, that is for oh. sure. We definitely need to be smart about this. We have gone off on some very half-cocked plans in the past and mm. gotten ourselves into a lot of trouble because of it. That is not something that we can get away with doing this time. No. The stakes a, here are very real. A misstep in Ridwan will get you killed. Or worse. And if there is any faith that knows how to inflict worse, it is that of Zan Kuthan. We saw some of the handiwork of Zan Kuthan only days ago. It was truly horrible. Lord of the Raven, I have a question for you that I'm hoping that you can help me with. Mm. She leans back in the chair. Perhaps. Before we go on this journey, I'd uh, ask if there's any way you can find me a glaive, the weapon of Shellen. You are brave if you wish to bring such a weapon into Nidal. It is not favored, especially not after Shellen stole the weapon from Zan Kuthan. You have ways of hiding it. I do have ways of hiding it. And in fact, there's something else that we are looking for. 
pieces of a golden rose. You have many spies, and they have many eyes. Perhaps one might spot a petal. I shall send out feelers through my network and see what I can find. As far as a glaive, I can see if one of the smiths has one. Or if perhaps we have one in the armory. That would be fantastic. I will see what I can do. To that end, since we are probably not going anywhere just now, we will need lodging. Would you recommend the Black Feather Inn? Uh, she says, uh, she smiles. Well, it's friendly to my lot, and I have a lot of uh, eyes there. Are there any she other? She looks at you with a bit of a smile. Are there, this song blushes. It's fine. Do you have any <coughs> other recommendations? No, I think that would be fine. I wouldn't mind keeping an eye on all of you. Oh. 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 Oh, I do have one more question. Hmm. Do you know of a, 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 a pale, flighty nobleman in your town? I saw him earlier, and I cannot find him. She looks to, up to the nearest raven, and it just kind of, it, it tucks its head under its wing. <laughs> and she's like, hmm. I will have to investigate further. I don't believe so. If even you cannot see him. My ravens see much, but they are not... They are not everywhere. Understandable. Most overlook them, though, and that is their advantage. If one of them sees them, will you let me know? I will do what I can. And she asks for a more complete description, because there's a lot of pale people <laughs> in, 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 in this town. Um, she's like, very well. Well, I wish you all the best of luck. I will, uh, of course, uh, stop by tomorrow before you depart. Are you planning on leaving in the morrow? I guess so, but I think that will have everything to do with whether or not we have come up with a decent plan. That is what we will do this evening. She says, very well. Um, there is not an awful lot I can tell you about that town. I do not have agents that are active in there that would be able to help you not without exposing themselves in ways that would undoubtedly get them killed. We certainly do not want that. Mm -hmm. That said, I shall pass along word as best I can that should there be a way that they can give you small, small edge, they will do so. I... But getting into the town is going to be your hardest challenge, even entering it is no easy task. It is a walled city. I vaguely remember reading when I was a child about a group of people who are in the doll, but are hiding themselves from Zonkuton. <laughs> yes, there are, of course, uh, many folk uh, in the nation who work in secret and refuse to accept Zonkuthan as their unquestioned master. But they keep themselves well hidden for a reason. Any breach and they all suffer. You have there have been... Have, hmm? Would you happen to have any kind of contact with them? Or know how we would find or... There are none in Ridwan. Identify them. There are none in Ridwan. That much is certain. There is no room for that in that town. It is too small. Too insular. There was rumors earlier this year that there was a network operating in the Umbral Basin, hiding from the storms and shadows, but I have not been able to reach out to them. Getting agents in there is, like I said, incredibly difficult. The last one I sent in there came back bleached white and uh, without his senses. He had seen things that could not be unseen. Oh, okay. Well, we've already done that. <clears throat> we've seen a lot. Something tells me it is only the beginning. I hate to say it, but the path that we have been on has gotten progressively more and more grotesque. And I fear that it's not going to get much better from here on out if we're headed to Nadal. But that being said, at least we have each other. Mm. And I like looking at your faces. <laughs> Uh, the Lord of Raven uh, escorts you all back upstairs uh, and uh, 
bids you all adieu uh, for the night. Um, and uh, as you uh, walk away, she's just kind of leaning up against the door post, watching you all leave. Uh, and every once in a while, a raven will pop onto the fence post that's right next to the door, and she'll reach out and stroke the, its feathers uh, gently and uh, reach into one of her many, many <clears throat> pouches and pockets on her on her uh, uh, leathers and uh, pull out like a seed or a tiny bit of biscuit or something and, and feed it to the, the bird. Um, you notice that as you are leaving here, the birds, they watch you. like, and And now that you've seen her like directly talk to them, and them seem to definitely understand. Um, the ones that are watching you now take on kind of a new gravity because they are her eyes and ears. Uh, they do watch and they do understand. Um, so uh, they watch as you make your way all the way back to the Black Feather Inn. Looks like this is home sweet home for tonight. No? I have a thing that I can do, uh, but it might benefit us if we took a day before leaving. No, we are going to spend the night at least, so... I mean, a whole day, because oh. it is, it's one of the more powerful things I know how to do. I just need to be able to prepare it in the morning, but then I'll lose one of my more um, powerful spell slots for the whole day. So the Lord of Ravens gave you a, a pretty good idea of the, the, the length of the journey that you needed to make. From here to Ridwan is probably at least four, maybe five days, depending on how well you navigate and, and make your way through the Umbral Basin. Okay. But from here to the Umbral Basin, which is kind of the edge of Molthoon, is over a day. So um, you'll be spending over a day in travel still in Molthoon. Now you're in the western edge of Molthoon, which definitely gets a lot more wild. There's not gonna be patrols out there. It's kind of wilderness. But it is still Molthoon and not Nadal. You'll know when you've entered because you will be in perpetual shadow. I am suddenly very glad that I purchased these and this on, like, kind of pulls their goggles from their face a bit and takes them back on. In the morning, I have a thing that I can do. I would rather do it in front of this shrine of Saren Ray, which I'm going to go find tonight, but it may give us an advantage and a direction. Any advantage is... It would be okay. a big one. Helpful. I'm hoping it would be a big one. I also have some abilities that might help us out in the wild to make our way a little bit easier too. And now I can see it will also not be as difficult. Toriel, can you do me a favor? Of course. When we get back to the inn, if you could cast some dancing lights and play some lovely music, oh. I could use it. Of course I will. Thank you. So you're, you're back at the inn. You've, you've gotten yourself a room. There are some rooms still available. Um, the uh, woman at the front desk is, is happy to see you all again. Um, when you do get back to it, by the way, Quellig is, is outside. Mm. And it's like, oh. <laughs> Hello. I'm glad to, to see you're back. Could it, can Quellig help? Oh, yes, actually, um, I'm looking for a shrine of Seren Ray. Oh, oh, very, very bright. Very I know, bright. I know, I know. Well, it does not like it. It is too bright. <laughs> well, just, just show me where, and I can go, and you won't hurt your eyes. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, Quellig leads you uh, through the town um, to... Okay, rest. Please. Okay. I'll, be, I'll be back. Be safe. Oh, of course. There are ravens everywhere. <laughs> Quellig leads you uh, through the town to, um, it is just a small shrine. It's not a full temple. Um, you're not even sure if it has a priest. Yeah. Um, it is just a, a small uh, private shrine um, dedicated to, to Saren Ray. And, and it's um, kind of in, a, in off the edge of a public square. Uh, there's a little bit of a park there. The plants here... Um, grow and thrive, but they're not, they don't get a lot of light because, you know, far off to the west, it's just perpetual gloom. So they're missing kind of part of the day's light. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, they do okay. And, uh, but off the edge of this, uh, kind of in this, this public space, there's just this stone uh, shrine. And it's, it's, it's roofed, but it's open walled. And in the center there is the, is the holy symbol of, of Saren Ray. Oh, I love it. Going to run in, um and kneel down and begin to try and commune with my god. Dawnflower, 
Hello. We are about to go into a very, very dark place, darker than I, I've ever been. If you have any words of advice, anything you can show me or tell me, uh, I will be performing a ritual in the morning. Anything would help. Anything to help my friends and keep the darkness at bay. Well, I kiss it and I, I, you know, put my hand on the shrine and then I go back. All right. Oh, I cast light on the shrine before I go. <laughs> That's a thing. She's the goddess of light. All right. Yeah, you cast light on it, and uh, the light kind of cascades down the the the, the symbol. Um, you don't you don't get a, an answer, but that's not unusual. Like you, you offer up prayers, and and they are answered in the way that they are answered. Um, and you make your way back to the inn. There, uh, the the rest of you have secured rooms. Um, the uh, innkeep is happy to see all of you returning. Um, she uh, explains that she has gone through her logs thoroughly. Uh, and there is um, no one who meets the description you mentioned staying there. Uh, um, it. And she even had uh, one of the one of the serving boys go upstairs and look through all the rooms, oh. the unoccupied rooms, to make sure that there was no one hiding out. Thank you for your dedication. I appreciate that. She's like, well, I couldn't have anyone staying in a room without paying. Oh. <laughs> fair, very fair. Uh, so you're able to uh, get a good meal. Um, there are, there is, uh, surprisingly no, uh, no chicken or fowl on the menu, <laughs> but there is beef, mm -hmm. uh, and there is, uh, there, they have a, they have a roasted boar, uh, for, for a boar roast that they're doing for dinner. Um, as long as there's no fish. I'm it has been a long time since enough. we've had, uh, had some boar in us. I remember that's being oh, yes. a point of a... Mm -hmm. That was a great meal. It was. It was so good. Wow. I really miss Asina. Me too. Mm -hmm. mm. I miss everyone. I miss Colvin. I hope he's okay. I hope so too. When this is all over, if we have any time for a vacation, we really should go back to Kassen for a... <laughs> for a vacation? For a vacation. As long as there aren't any more undead running around. That's my fear. <laughs> ah, they're probably handling it. Huh? <laughs> It's fine. What's a, what's a few more waves of undead? That's All right. Grave land um, <laughs> It's fine. You can find me at the Platinum Whisper. <laughs> Same. I'd like to be in the lap of luxury. Mm -hmm. for once. Yes. It's uh, nice to sleep on a bed. Speaking of which, though, you have been very quiet ever since we left Canarite. Are you okay? Oh, you know, I just, uh, I told my father I was leaving again. Uh, he asked me if Cassin was my home now. I told him, uh, that I don't know if I can call it my home, since we have been taken elsewhere and probably I don't know when we'll be able to return. Um, but I told him that I have an allegiance with you and the Knights. And the Everflame, mm -hmm. and uh, he told me I'm not welcome in the home again. So, we're your family. <laughs> we love you. You are always welcome with us, and we will always be your home. Thank you. I I greatly appreciate that. And I mean, if you hadn't have sent me out to Last Wall, I don't know where I would be now. <laughs> you know. I'm thankful to be here and to be doing this with all of you because I believe that what we are working for is much nobler than anything Monthoon would send Monthoon would send me to. We are glad that you are here too. Whatever the circumstances of your original sin or whatever it was, I'm almost entirely certain it had nothing to do with you and everything to do with your jerk of a father. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I mean, other than me not being a good daughter or whatever his perception of a good daughter is. His perception is shite. <laughs> his perception's very bad. Yes. He needs glasses. I could loan him mine, but then I wouldn't be able to see in the dark. <laughs> oh, that's we a game. That. Yes. Yeah. We need you. 
to be able to see at all times. <laughs> and we need you for our courage. That's correct. Oh, yes, you give us courage. <laughs> So you are uh, enjoying a, a fine meal. Every once in a while, a, while, a raven will uh, hop over to one of the perches nearby the table. The ravens seem very good about not getting on the tables or the chairs or anything like that. But throughout the bar, uh, there are uh, wooden rails. And those seem to be exclusively for the ravens to go and hop on and kind of, they come over and sit near the table. And you can tell when they're like, you gonna, you gonna finish that bread? Do, do, uh, do you want some? Because... <laughs> You want some they, they give you that look like, uh -huh. oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, they, they'll, they'll take it right from your head. Very, very fat ravens. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're a bit chonk. chonk. Yeah, no, they're a little chonk. Oh, yeah. Can I chonky try boys? Pet they chonk. Like uh, you can I try. Can very, very gentle, while I'm feeding it. Here's you, some, look at some food. It's okay. Kind of looks at you funny and then, and then, well, then it, then it takes the bread and is like. Okay, good. <laughs> can I try something? <laughs> Can I guess comprehend languages and try to talk to one of the crows? <laughs> well, remember, it only lets you understand a language. Yeah, but yeah. But, but Quellig said that they understand us. They do understand you. You know, uh, you cast comprehend language and you try and get crow. <laughs> um, but if you're getting the language right, it's just you're not sure if the entire room, you're not sure if the spell's working right or just all of the ravens in this room are just saying, food? <laughs> Food? Oh my God. Food? Love it. Love it. Food? Exactly where that I one's love from. It. Did I? No, I think I did that right. Uh, you're, you're honestly not sure. Uh, <laughs> you may just, the, the spell just may not work very well on ravens. Yeah. As you're thinking, omelet is over, it's going, food! Ta food, please! <laughs> <laughs> All the ravens are saying, I can't reach! Here you food. go, here you go. And I, nice. I, there you go. Oh. All right. Well, the, the rest of the evening uh, passes. Uh, pleasantly enough. You've spent days on the road, and although you've been, uh, you know, you've just spent a good deal of time being pampered uh, in Canterate, the long uh, days in uh, the back of a wagon uh, have not exactly uh, been easy, so spending a night in a bed um, is a welcome bit of rest. That being said, I think Liz has sort of been feeling a little bit um, itchy for like a little bit of a simpler life. They really enjoy the time on the wagon and they are actually starting to think they are getting too soft spending time on too many beds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean that that is certainly true and the Platinum, the Platinum Whisperer, that place was... It was a lot. I mean it was like literally sleeping on a cloud, mm -hmm. way too soft. <gasps> Yeah. I feel like I lost a couple of calluses. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> it is not in my nature to spend time out of nature. We can open the window. You can sleep right underneath it. You can uh, see the stars. It is very cold. Um, in fact, here in the here in the foothills of the Menador Mountains, uh, the chill really creeps into this town. And late at night, you even see frost on the windows. This, the time of year, it is, it is uh, approaching the end of the year. Um, you're not quite there yet, you know, but um, it's not far off. And uh, as a result, uh, although you are getting further and further south, it's still pretty cold. Um, it's not quite hit snow yet, but you're probably maybe, you know, a month from now, it'll be snowing quite regularly. We may need to buy winter clothes before we leave. That is not yeah. a bad idea. We do still have some money in the party mm -hmm. fund. We could invest in a couple of goats. Yes, mm -hmm. that's very smart. Boots. Fur lined. I've got boots. some furs. Ah, oh, yes, they match mine. Are they warm? Ooh. They're quite warm. Oh, yeah. are you well, they are. They are elven make. They are not only the most f fine craftsmanship, but they are basically suitable for any weather. Okay. Mm. Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, you ended up going to a, like, a, a shop of imports specifically from Kyanin in Canarate. Where you um, probably got an earful from me about how amazing Kyanin is. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you're all able to get some sleep. Um, the ravens are not allowed up in the, the, the rooms, fortunately. Um, although uh, each room does have uh, like flower boxes and whatnot on the front uh, where oftentimes ravens are perched and hanging out um, because they're everywhere in this town. So uh, the, the night passes um, uneventfully, no, nothing, nothing untoward happens. 
um, and uh, you're able to uh, wake up the next morning refreshed and um, and uh, ready to face the day. Okay, okay I'm awake. I'm, I'm wide awake. Um, if anyone wants to go with me, I'm going to go to the shrine and I'm going to do my thing. I'm oh. interested in seeing what it is that you're going to do. I'm very intrigued. Okay. Is there a shrine of Shellen anywhere around? Um, in this town? Um, Maybe near? No. Okay. No, there just isn't. Okay. Well, um, that doesn't mean that there aren't people who venerate Shellen in town. Yeah. There just isn't. There just isn't a shrine. Maybe um, Sarah and Ray and Shellen are friends, and Sarah and Ray will tell <laughs> Shellen that you are there. Uh, maybe. Perhaps. Kind of like a god network. Like yeah. they'll share the status on, you know, yeah. you know, god book. Uh, <laughs> it could. You never know. Yeah, sure. It's um, a conference call. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> little FaceTime. Um, you make your way back to the uh, uh, shrine <laughs> of Saren Ray. Who, who's all going? I would like to come. All right. Me too. I think I would all of us are probably. First, like to stop by and see if I could get that glaive. Okay. Oh. So you're going to go look for that. Mm -hmm. We'll see you there. So uh, that that going to find the glaive will take a bit. That's you're okay. you're going to miss out on whatever this is if you go find. That's it. fine. All right. Um, okay. So uh, the the group of you go to the shrine of Saren Ray. <clears throat> um, you find it in that same little courtyard. The light that you cast yesterday should be long gone, but it's not. It's still glowing. Oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> I mm. I did that yesterday, and it's still there. It should be gone by now, but it's not. I think that uh, that just shows that this place needed the light. Mm -hmm. She'll bring it. Okay, okay. It's very weird. I haven't done this before. I don't exactly know how. I sit cross-legged in front of the shrine. And I, I sweep up some stones, some pebbles, some pieces of, of rock and fallen shrine. And I hold them in my hand. I release them. I close my eyes. And for ten minutes... She sits there and it's very quiet. And she starts to kind of look like she has frost on her. But she is looking at something. And she's seeing something. She's reading omens. Mmm. So, uh, the spell read omens is a is a difficult spell uh, for clerics to request. It isn't always granted, and it is only usually granted in times of need or when uh, a high priest uh, happens to uh, you know be able to teach you the proper way to do it. Asking Saren Ray uh, for the spell uh, last night, um, you found that when you prepared this morning, you could prepare the spell. Um, so you cast read omens, and it allows you to ask about one upcoming problem. Goal, event, or activity? Yep. Within the next week. Yep, within the next week. Oh. What would you like to ask about? The safest path from here to the temple in Rid One. So you ask Saren Ray to give you guidance on how to reach the Shadow Flame Cathedral. The message looking down at the rocks, they suddenly begin to make sense to you as the, as the spell surges and looking down at them you get the sense that you know the answer and without really knowing what it even is you begin to speak the words and uh, looking at uh, Linnaeus the voice coming out of her is strange otherworldly It's a dark path. The answer is the words that come out are a baptism in pain is the only way for you 
to find sanctuary for the lost. Was it only the words that I received? That's it. Okay. I shake off some of the frost that formed and I, I um, disperse the pebbles. Well, a baptism in pain. Is the only way for you to find sanctuary for the lost. Sounds appropriate for where we're going, unfortunately. You did not sound like you. Yes, um, this is something I've never tried before. I, I honestly didn't think it would work. I had to ask Sarah and Ray for it last night. Have uh, you seen other people do it before? No. <laughs> well, uh, I, I heard the Abbess Delphine do it a while ago, and I, I, I did see her do it once. I don't remember what she was asking. Uh, I was behind a, a, a drawing, um, a drawn curtain. I was not supposed to watch her when she was in her personal study, mm. but I went in to read books and, um, well, she came in and I hid. That's remarkable. It was a very, very interesting thing to watch. Are you okay? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Are you cold? A little. You were covered in frost. Oh. Well, at least that's what it looked like. I mean, She's I warm. So. Um, sort of yes. offers a hug. Okay, yes. Yes, I would love that. Thank you. <laughs> oh. You make your way, Iculus, to the rookery. <clears throat> uh, hoping to find uh, the Lord of Ravens there. there. There are other functionaries. You've seen other guards and stuff. The guards here, surprise, surprise, the emblem of this town is a raven, right? You know, <laughs> on their badge. Shock. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so you've seen other guards and functionaries, but, you know, none of them, none of them have any news for you or anything like that. None of them even approach you. And uh, so you make your way to the rookery. Um, and uh, upon arriving, um, you, you find it's surrounded by, you know, ravens as usual, right? I mean, this is where they live, or at least a lot of them. Uh, what do you do? Well, I would like to enter. Hmm. Um, you go up and uh, open up the door, and uh, looking inside, you see there is, you know, there's the staircase going down and the staircase going up. The uh, lanterns going down have been extinguished. It's just dark down there. Um, however, leaning up against the banister, going up stairs, um, there is... Um, leaning just right up against it is a silver glaive. And sitting on the banister next to it is a raven. Ka -ka! <laughs> and then it kind of hops off and flutters and flies kind of up the stairs. Uh, and as it does so, it kind of knocks at the glaive and it kind of tips and falls over. Pointing directly at you. Uh, Mr. Raven, may I? The Raven took off. He's a Raven. Not interested <laughs> in you. Achilles bends down, mm -hmm. picks up the glaive, immediately feels a wave of just emotion and positive energy. Mm -hmm. A feeling that it was the same feeling that he felt when, right before his father died, mm. the feeling that he felt when his father looked over at him and smiled just before the assassin killed him. The last feeling of his father. And he looks down at the glaive and Shellen, you brought me here. I've asked you for so many years, why? Why something like this could happen to my family and what was it all for? My father was a good man. He was a 
He did not deserve that type of death. But I know that you do not make mistakes. And I know that this is not just about him. But you've brought me on this journey for something else and you've connected me with these wonderful people for something else. And I know it's to bring your brother back to you. The way that you remember him. And I promise you, I will do just that. He takes the glaive, places it. All right. Taking the glaive, um, you uh, bring it with you, um, and uh, you are all able to gather back together uh, at the uh, Black Feather Inn. Got a new sword. Yes, it's lovely. Very sharp. Yes. It's very nice. <laughs> How do you feel about the baptism of Bane? Oh. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Oh, yeah. What is that? Well, um, I did a little thing. This is fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. Just a little, oh, uh, a little omen. Uh, uh, I did a ritual at the Shrine of Serenary. Um, well, a god spoke through you. Was it? Maybe. Maybe. Something. You didn't Something. sound like you. Oh. Well, Baptism of pain. We'll bring you to the sanctuary. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to need to hurt ourselves or something to prove that we can get in. I... Whoa. I, uh... I've been around to a lot of different cities, just as you have, and so I have, uh, some innate abilities to blend in the two cultures very well, and I was paying very close attention during those visions to some of the things that were being said. I. I think I picked up a few catchphrases that we can use that will make us look and appear a bit more like Zonkuthon worshippers. And I know that probably repulses you, but we might have to pretend a lot in order to pass safely through the land. Well, if it makes anyone feel better, for an hour I can make all of us look different. Oh. So maybe That's we could even, for an hour, you could Look like Lucky, perhaps, even. Oh, oh well, he might already know that. Oh, he might. Oh. All of them might know. Is there anybody else you can make them look like? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't particularly like the idea either, but we did see other people in those crowds. Maybe if I can rack my brain and try to remember, mm -hmm. we, can, we can pose as other people. But in general, one city is much like the next. Did it seem like there was a good mix of different types of people there? Uh, it was really hard to tell, um, primarily just because everything, like no one was fully formed. Mm -hmm. They were just kind of made of shadow and smoke. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell, like, was that a human? Was that a half elf? Was that a, a, a mm. fetchling? Uh, you know, who knows? Um, yeah, the only thing is you could tell whether or not they were, you know, halflings or gnomes or, you know, shorter folk uh, than taller folk. But other than that, it's kind of really hard to make out details. Um, I mean, you got a good sense of some of the more key figures, but if they weren't the ones talking or being talked to, mm -hmm. um, everybody else is really indistinct because it seems like the, the the lantern only really focuses on the people involved in the scene. Um, then that actually might be to our advantage. Just be indistinct. I have an idea. Yes. If you can disguise us, give us all a multitude of scars. I was thinking we could most of us could look like the dock workers. Yes. Yes. You seem Although. to thrive on pain. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm assuming you're gathering up your things and preparing to go. Yeah. It's still relatively early in the morning and, and there's a full day ahead of you. Buying winter clothes as we go. Okay. There's also the Umbrella Basin. <coughs> it is unlikely, <coughs> but in the event that we might run into one of these, uh, this group of people oh. that uh, uh, Lord of Raven was talking about, yes. they could be helpful in helping us navigate it, we shouldn't hold out hope 
to run into them, but we should keep that in mind. <laughs> you um, pack up your belongings and uh, check out of the the uh, Black Feather Inn. Um, the innkeep is 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 pleasant and you know well, sad to see that you're leaving already. Um, uh, but you are able to get a, a quick bite of breakfast uh, before you make your way out. And uh, you make your way out into the street to prepare on your journey. And uh, there, out in the street, um, is the Lord of Ravens. And she is there uh, with a bunch of horses. Oh, mm, that's very kind of you. Uh, she looks at you and says, well, don't think I'm that generous. You're not taking these into Nadal. Well, of course no, not. I'm <laughs> just to the edge. But I'm pretty sure that we're going, did. it would probably not be safe to bring in horses. We'll, mm. we'll manage that on foot. Uh, she says, uh, yes. Um, if you bring them uh, to the border, I shall have some of my birds uh, help guide them home. In a manner of speaking. Or at least lead us to them. Uh, so just let them free. Once you are there, they will they will head back this way. This is a journey they have done more than once. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, there are... let me thank you for the glaive. She looks at you. Think nothing of it. Um, no, I mean that. If you get killed because of it, please think nothing of it. I don't want to be to blame. No, listen. She looks at all of you kind of with a, a bit of a grin. I do not envy you the journey you are about to take. I have had many very, very skilled and capable agents go into Nadal and never come back. It is not an easy place to operate in. Even those who travel there honestly oftentimes run afoul of the laws or some ritual or something and end up in trouble that they cannot escape from. Mistakes in Ridwan mean death. If they catch you, they will flay you. They will display your bodies for all to see. She says, and on that note, I've also included uh, some uh, provisions for your travel. I believe uh, the uh, good mistress here at the Black Raven provided a number of uh, muffins and uh, some hardtack and uh, some uh, dried boar from last night for your journey. I wish you all the best. Um, I, there are also some um, tents in there and uh, a few warm winter blankets. I wouldn't want you to freeze on the way there. Ooh, and biscuits for the horses. I give my muffin to Iculus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I know you're just going to eat yours in two seconds anyway. Mm -hmm. it's, it's already done. <laughs> <laughs> Save that one for later. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, finally, I'm not sure if you'll really want it, but I've provided one anyway. Uh, in one of the packs is a holy book of Zan Kuthan. Oh, I should read it. Yeah. Careful. I am not joking. It is sharp. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the edges are bound in sharp metal. You will cut yourself when you handle it. Well, Good that'll give us some of the scars we were talking about. Hey, lovely. But inside is the prayers and rituals of his faith. I'll read it. I'll, I'll read it on a journey. So will I. It is, uh, it is, she looks at you, very delightful reading. I'm sure. <laughs> it's not. Always fond of a bedtime story. <laughs> I'll read it out loud to you. Thanks. Mm-hmm. And cast mage hand. Most help. Grab it out. Oh, that's smart. But then I have to hold it, and so it's probably going to get cut anyway. It's fine. She <laughs> um, looks to all of you and, and says, I did some research last night. This might help you on your journey. This dagger, and uh, you left it, and she gives it back to you, does not yet contain a soul. Once it does... It is a very delicate item. Exposing it to the sun will destroy it. Exposing it to the light will destroy it. The dagger or the soul? The, the dagger. It will destroy the dagger and the, the link. I, I read up on the phrase that was said. It was bound in shadow never again to see the light. 
That phrase is used before, and it is used as a warning for other items that have been created by them, and it is always in reference to things that cannot stand the light. They must live in shadow for eternity, and it is not safe for them. I have a sneaking suspicion that is what this means. Well, then I guess we are lucky that we are going in there with the Sunshine Squad. <laughs> she looks at you and she says, I hope that is enough. Because if it is not, you will need to get it out. If you are to be successful, because the sun does not shine on a dull. I bring the sun with me. She looks at you and says, I hope it is enough. So do I. Perhaps we can break that chain and free the souls. Is that how you free the souls? Do you break it? I guess we'll find out. They are bound inside. It would be the only way. Okay. But such things cannot just simply be sundered with steel. Hitting them with a hammer won't do it. It won't get the job done. Okay. But sunlight might. It might. It's good to know. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Fast travels. As fast as I can get them there. My ravens will watch for you. Thank you. Good yeah. luck. You've been most helpful. <laughs> she looks. <laughs> Thank me when you come back alive and with all of your flesh. Oh, we will. And she, looking at all of you, <laughs> she kind of gives a smile. Please do come back in one piece. You're all too adorable. And she kind of turns and makes her way down the street. All right. The group of you. That's a date. The group of you. Are we all going on a date with her? I mean, I mean I'm okay with that, but I'm okay. Why not? I mean, how are you splitting the check? All right. Anyway, um, listen. Uh, you, you ride out from Doommark and begin making your way west. Uh, in, in facing uh, such doom such danger. I'm going to go ahead and give everybody two hero points for oh, this session. Oh, that's yay. not scary or bad at all. Once again, I, I continually forget to give them a, to, to you at the very beginning of the session because I'm, I'm a bad GM. <laughs> also, <laughs> but you all knew that already, that so all? that's fine. Okay. I thought you were benevolent. I mean, uh, well, that's why I gave you two. I'm a bad GM, <laughs> but benevolent. So uh, it's fine. <laughs> you ride west for the rest of the day. Uh, leaving the more civilized lands along, around Dumark behind. The road that you are on quickly turns into a trail as the roads only go to the outlying farms. Beyond that, you're kind of in the terrain that's more like hunter's trails and, and woodman's trails. Uh, but there is one that has wagon ruts in it that seems to head west. So you ride through uh, barren farm fields that are been harvested months ago. Only a few ravens uh, hopping around in the fields looking for uh, seed or a scrap of, of, of something to eat um, as you uh, ride off into the wilderness. The day goes smoothly. It's cold. There's a, there's a wind uh, that's blowing off of the Minespin Mountains to the north, and it brings with it a deep chill. You're can't quite be sure, but that chill might be made even worse by your upcoming destination. For every mile that you, you, you go, that <clears throat> shadow, that line of darkness out at the horizon slowly grows closer. Mm. It's an ominous place, and it doesn't seem to move. Weather all around it changes and shifts throughout the day. Clouds break and move about the, the sky, but not there. It's just dark. The sun does not shine on Nadal. At the end of the day, you find yourself um, significantly closer to the border. You're not there yet, but you will probably reach it pretty early in the morning tomorrow. And you find a, uh, a quiet place to camp off the side of the trail. Um, since it is very possible that we are not going to be able to find anything fresh to eat for the next few days, I'd like to do a little bit of hunting just to provide us with at least one last decent meal before we go in the dark. I feel it will hearten all of us. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. I should also note if you want to, you can, if, you're, if you feel some sort of time pressure, you could push forward a few hours into the night and get right up to the border or very close to it. Um, 
I like the idea of Liss hunting. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Taking a, yeah. a, a, a night a little further a away. A beat yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to get ambushed in the middle of the night by anything. I mean, we might still More shadow creatures? No, thank you. All right, so if you're going to do some hunting, go ahead and uh, roll me survival to go out and uh, find some uh, food. Uh, that will be a 30... A 34? Yeah, you crush it. You, you go out and are, are able to uh, uh, bring down um, like a buck that is roaming out in the wilderness wow. nearby. And uh, are, it's a um, younger animal, but um, you're able to bring it down and, uh, uh, and bring it back. And it'll take you a few hours to get any meat off of it. And then, um, you know, throughout most of the night, you can uh, bury it up with the coals to get it to kind of cure up a bit. Treat the cleaning of this animal a little bit like therapy. Mm -hmm. It's almost ritualistic the way that they prepare it. Mm. While you're doing this ritual, I think I'm going to do another. Same thing as this morning. Ooh. I don't want to do it too many times. I feel like I'm, I'm pushing a limit. So you prepared it twice? Yes, I did. All right. Now you get to see it. Mm, yes. What should I ask? I was thinking about asking how oh. I'm imagining we... The course that's set in my mind is we have to go into this temple and um, destroy these chains. But they are probably still being worn by the smith. That is a fear. In the vision, you did see the smith take them off and place them on that pedestal as if it were a display. Okay. Maybe if there's a way to ask if how to connect with the people who are not part of Zonkuton's. Oh, the people mm. in the Umbral Basin. Mm. The ones who do not follow his teachings or evil methods. They probably have valuable information of how to survive in there. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. That is what I'll ask. If Sarah and Ray can reach me here, let's try. And she does the same thing, sits cross-legged, grabs some stones, sets it out, and for ten minutes sits there and starts to develop that mm -hmm. frost. You reach out to Sanre, beseeching her to tell you how you might find this aid, this help. It takes a moment. Sit there staring. This is what happened last time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look up, she opens up her eyes and they seem almost like they're dancing with flame. And the words that come out of her mouth are not her own voice. Oh. And it says, three trees upon one stone shall light the way to the veil beneath. And then suddenly you snap out of it, and you oh. didn't hear it. <laughs> oh, I immediately so cold. put a blanket that I've been holding Thank you. sort of around your shoulders. I felt so warm there for a minute, but not now. What happened? I didn't hear anything. Did, it, did anything happen? She yeah. spoke through you again. Why? Oh, it's, it's an awful lot to think that Sarah and Ray would speak through me. It's, um, that's, a, that's a big ask. Are there any like lesser angels or something oh. of Saren Ray? Yes, she has many people that are devoted to her, many much more powerful than me. Yes. Yes? Even if it is a lesser speaking through you, someone had to tell them to do so. Mm hmm. Your God loves you a lot. No. No, she's not. No. I've never had a God speak through me. No. <laughs> no, it's, um... What have I told you all about how you are really bad at accepting compliments? <laughs> you are, it's true. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> anyway, Ooh. she said... Yes. Three trees upon one stone shall light the way to the veil beneath. The veil? Yes, so I, I, it seems to me that perhaps it uh, is a symbol for a hidden place. Oh. Seems that way, yes. Mm -hmm. But now I know what to look out for. We should be very careful. In case there are, as the Lord of Ravens suggested, assassins after us, if they know we have this dagger, we don't want to lead them in here. 
Well, they'll have as much of a difficult time finding us in here as I imagine anybody else would. True. You're able to uh, make a camp, enjoy some... Who's hungry? Some Me. venison. Mm. Mm. Very much. Always. And uh, uh, you uh, create kind of a, a bit of a fire, right? To be able to roast up uh, as much of this meat as possible. That I way you don't leave too to much to waste. want to something along the lines of chicken and dumplings. Except oh! with the hardtack and the venison and make like a, a venison and dumpling kind of a stew thing. Yes. Okay. Because it's so cold. We need a stew. Mm. Mm. Sure. Um, yeah, you know, using 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 some of the, the you know the, the the you break down the tack into kind of like you grind it back up into you know it's it's flowery bits and use that to make a bit of base. It's a kit bash. It's not exactly perfect, but kit bashing <laughs> is what I do. But uh, between that and and uh, you know some of the the uh, fresh vegetables, there's a, there's a little bit in the packs. You know some some carrots and some potatoes and stuff like that uh, that'll keep. Um, you do find uh, a bit of food. Um, there's not a lot in there. It's not like she, uh, the, the Lord of Ravens didn't provide you with a ton, uh, just because she knows that you have to leave the horses behind tomorrow. So, um, whenever I make a stew out on the road, I always think of private car and his really awful stew. <laughs> it was really not good. It was so bad. It was awful. It was but mostly it, just vegetables floating in water. It yeah. was the worst, but you know what? He it worked. was the first meal that we ever ate together. And this he worked true. hard on it. You spend the rest of the evening reminiscing about old times. It seems like it was forever ago in another life where, you know, five strangers got together and headed north to Castle Everstand. Now you are heading into darkness. The night passes. The next morning, you get up with the dawn. The sun is rising in the east as it always does. But you look to the west, where the darkness lives, where shadows rule, making your way further and further toward the border of after packing up your camp. You soon find yourself approaching what must be the end of Molthoon and the beginning of Nadal. Up ahead, not a mile or two away, the sky above is nothing but broiling clouds and darkness. The land beneath it seems untouched by the light. And here on the border, as you make your way up, you see a crumbling building, a lone structure out here in the wilderness, obviously uninhabited, its roof fell in who knows how long ago, is an old, ruined stone structure standing alone in front of the gloom. What do you do? Does there appear to be anybody inside of this structure? You don't see anybody from here, but you're about half a mile away right now. I hmm. think that we should approach very carefully. I actually have an ability that might allow me to get a closer look without putting any of you at risk, but it would require me to go ahead alone. Oh. Well, alone? Just up to the building, not any further than that. How far away do we need to be? I mean, I don't want you to be within, I mean, as long as you find something to duck behind or stay low, cover yourself with a blanket, I don't care, but don't, don't approach too quickly. At least maybe 30 feet behind me. That's okay. not very far at all. No. Um, 50, 60? Yeah. Okay. I'll s sneak a few, like 30, 40 feet behind you. So me and then Ariel and then the rest of you. You approach the building and make your way up to it. Um, I'm assuming you're... I'm using my terrain stalker. Okay. Um, and what's that, what's that going to do for you? So basically terrain stalker works... Um, uh, I can select a difficult terrain um, from the following list, and I'm guessing that this would count as like underbrush. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, while undetected by anyone who isn't my ally in that type of terrain, I can sneak without a, uh, without attempting a stealth check as long as I move more, no more than five feet, and do not move within ten feet of the enemy. Right. So I'm going to stay at least ten feet away from the building. Yeah. 
So this is something you only really use once you're right up on it. Right. Like when you're making your way up to it, you're not going to move at five no. feet per per. I'm going to get pretty close, to, but yeah. like as once within, I'm in that like that the 10, 15 foot range. Yeah, sure. Then I'll start. Uh, like, you can certainly slow down when you're close. Right. Um. So you make your way up to this ruined building, and it, it becomes clear when you draw near that it is a ruin. There's mm -hmm. there, and it, it's not very large either. We're talking about you know 40 feet by 20 feet. It's a tiny little thing. Um, uh, just a, a stone structure, you know, kind of stone end walls. Uh, you know, uh, so, you know, uh, that had an A-frame roof and the roof has collapsed in and uh, um, you can't really make out much uh, about it until you circle around to the other side and you come to realize, I would ask you to roll, but it's obvious to you because you know um, that on the front of it is an old, old worn symbol of Serenry. It looks like it was at one point in time um, like a chapel. Do I hear anything coming from inside? No, no. They were, do there appear to be any lights or anything? No, it's a ruin. There, there's like you. You look into the front doors that are have rotted off their hinges and fallen to the ground, and the inside is filled with kind of rotten timbers and and ancient like hay that's molded to filth. The whole thing's a mess. No one has been in this building. I only ask because you know, forever. there could be squatters. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I mean, you, and you do sneak up to the door and take a look around to see if there's anything going on in there. But like the, the what pews you can see that haven't been crushed by the timbers up above, um, uh, you know, are ancient and worn away to almost nothing. There, there's, the, the, this building fell into ruin dozens of years ago, at least maybe significantly longer than that, maybe hundreds of years ago. It, it's hard to tell. I turn around and I, I, I wave and I get Tariel's attention and I, I do a big, big O with my hands. We're okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just gonna stand up. <laughs> okay, stand up too. All right, oh. well you, you all join and are all able fun. to take a look at the building. Oh, well as soon as I see that it's a Serenray Ray building, I'm, I'm going inside. You, you almost kind of can't. Um, I will they, find a way. <laughs> well, uh, that's fair. But under, understand that like this looks like a one-room chapel that's fine. where the entire roof has fallen in. Oh. So there isn't, it, it's, it's just an old ruin. I'll stand on top of it uh, if I have to. I'm going to be in there. F fair. <laughs> you can kind of push your way inside um, and, and, and kind of climb around in the debris. Yep. Um, be careful. And, okay. uh, and uh, the, the, the only uh, life uh, or sign of life you see here is that as you kind of crawl up into the moldering, ancient, uh, uh, filthy, filthy hay that used to uh, cover this place, because um, uh, it looks like it one time had a thatch roof, um, uh, you, you disturb uh, a family of field mice oh. that go scattering uh, <laughs> off into the, the rafters. Yeah, it Sorry. doesn't look like you hurt them. They just, they just got scared Sorry. and went running away. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, but I didn't disturb your home. Um, but on the far side, you can see the altar. Oh, I'm there. I'm um, going there. <laughs> it's, it's tricky to get there. You yeah. have to kind of crawl Ouch. through the debris. I would have um, let you borrow my boots, but you ran in too fast. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's oh, like a spider. Just Don't breathe in that Going. Oh, she doesn't um, care. <laughs> you crawl in um, through the debris and make your way up to the ancient altar. She's too dumb to care. Um, the, where the holy symbol might have one time been, it's been pried off, it's gone. Um, there is, um, a, a wooden, um, uh, uh, icon at the back wall of Saren Ray, but it looks like someone slashed at it with a sword. It's kind of ruined. Um, it looks like this place was probably looted, um, forever ago and then just fell into ruin after everyone abandoned it. Um. Mean. The, the only thing you find here, uh, after you kind of look around the altar, is there is um, one candlestick that uh, uh, was, was uh, uh, looks like the holder, right? The candle holder was probably some precious metal and that's gone. Yeah. But knocked down behind it, you find a candle. And I mean, it's a nub of a candle. It's like this big. There's this much candle left. Uh, and an old kind of wet moldy wick. I'll take it and, it, oh, it's precious. Okay. I'm going to take one of my newer candles from my pack. Okay. I'm going to put the old one away. I want to keep that one. 
I'm going to take a new one. I'm going to go to the altar and just sort of smash it down and then do just a short <laughs> burning hands <laughs> to set it on fire. <laughs> just a little, a little. <laughs> and then I also want what to go. What was the noise that made again? A little. All right, yeah, gotcha. Just a little one. A tiny, I, a tiny I just burst to check. of <laughs> fire. And then I, I, as soon as that's set ablaze, I'm going to go back to that effigy of her that has been slashed, and I want to cast light on that. Just bring as much light without drawing too much of attention here, where it once was. Um, <laughs> you cast light upon it, and uh, even here in the gloom and shadows, you can kind of make out the carving it might have at one time been. It was never it was never the most glorious shrine to Saren Ray. It looked like a simple place, uh, a place of simple worship for those who had just come out of the darkness. Because obviously this building was built way after Nadal became a, a place of dark and shadow. Um, as a matter of fact, building a shrine here is kind of a, a real, real affront to the uh, Nidalese. It, it's, it's kind of a, a you know, uh, thumbing your nose at the yeah 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 you're kind of th you're kind of thumbing your nose at at Nadal by putting a, by putting a shrine here, uh, so it's also no surprise that the place has been sacked, um, but uh, that's you know that's somehow how uh, Saren Ray does right oh, yes. boldness is part of her faith there is <laughs> there's no room for for being uh, you know afraid to face. The darkness. Yeah. true. Are you done in there? We yes. Probably should sorry. Yes. Sorry. I just had to. Yep. It's fine. Yep. And then she crawls right back out. Help you out. <laughs> Thank you. And, and <laughs> as, as I'm doing it, I'm just leaning against the wall of this, just being like, oh. your God loves you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> All right. This I'll is uh, this kind of castle look back over their shoulder at the the light on the horizon behind them and is like, are you ready? I kiss the door real fast and I go, okay. Let's so go. so it's approaching noon. You're getting close to the border. The sun is just getting up overhead, which means it's just about to pass over the clouds that you are about to enter. So you're kind of at that dividing line yeah. um, where <laughs> the next steps forward will be into the shadow and the sun will not find you again. Oh, just stop everybody at the border. Place. Look down. No shadows. Oh, well, it's good, I guess. Soak it in while you can. <laughs> Sometimes they detach. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you, I'm assuming you, you are true to your word and let the horses go. Oh, oh yeah. yes. yes. Um, they do not deserve to go in there. That oh. is a horrible existence for, um, for a horse. As you, uh, as you get to that point and you kind of untether the horses and uh, get off of them, uh, you notice that a, a trio of ravens have suddenly, I mean, appeared. Is They flew. They've been tracking you. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't just pop into existence. Uh, ah! But the, uh, <laughs> ah! Yeah. Come on, feathers go flying. No, no, no. They've, they've been tracking you, but they have, they've been keeping a distance. Uh, but now you can see them. Uh, up on top of the uh, old shrine, looking down at the horses as they kind of stomp around and uh, and and graze for a little bit, and then the uh, first raven kind of comes down at the the horse that's in the back and kind of calls wildly and kind of nips at the the horse and it starts running, uh, and one by one the ravens kind of herd the horses. They're, they're not doing a great job. It, it doesn't look like they're leading them down an exact path, <laughs> yeah. but they're certainly getting them away from the border. Horses know their way home. They'll be fine. You take Shall we? one last look back before making your way into the Umbral Basin. Looking forward, you see storms. Looks like it's raining up ahead, but you don't hear any sound of rain. Wasn't it raining ash in the vision? Yes. Oh. Looking back, back into Malthoon, you see the horses riding off. Somewhere far off in the distance, as you all stand there, looking, you see a lone rider 
behind you. I would let through my keen eye see I have very keen eyes. Way too far away. <gasps> Damn it. Riding toward us from the light side. Yeah. It's coming from Moldun. Yeah. Could be an assassin. Let's go. Yeah. And and mind you, must be oh. ten to fifteen miles behind you. Like there's this isn't dense forest land out here. There are there are trees and stuff, but the, you you can see a good long distance. And along the same trail, you see a lone rider, a lone dark shape, slowly yeah. following up behind you. Wait, hang on though. There is only one of them, and they're not attempting to hide. And if there is only one, then perhaps we should take care of it here, if um, it is danger. It's we going to take a while to get here from that far away. We should just go ahead and go inside. We're already losing time. Mm -hmm. What if it is important news? What if it's then the Lord will... of the Ravens? Yes. Or what if it's that pale man that has been following you? It would take, you would lose the rest of today if you tried to sit here and wait for oh. this figure to oh. follow okay. up well, you. This isn't. Maybe not. I, I think huh? uh, if they are set out to find us, then they will find us. And if they don't find us, then maybe that is all the better at this point. We are only leading them into danger anyway. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well. You take your first steps into Nadal. Marching into this land, it's like kind of entering a different place. It seems strange that only two days ago you were in Doommark. A few days before that, you were in Canarate uh, and enjoying, you know, your feathered pillows. But here you are stepping into darkness and shadow, moving into the gloom. It takes a while for your eyes to fully adjust to this place. Um, at first, everything seems too flat because there just isn't bright light. There isn't darkness. It's just gloom everywhere and it makes everything kind of seem kind of flat the, the, the distance is hard to gauge and it becomes very difficult to kind of navigate uh, first of all where is the sun you have no idea anymore so if you get turned around in here you just wander in the wrong direction there's no way to identify there's no stars to see there's no sun to set your path there's no moon there's no nothing it's just gloom Mailed. Mailed. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. I can. I can do this. You can do this. Huh. Do you remember that one thing that you used that helped us? Wanderer's guide. You, you don't have to worry if you don't have it prepared today. It's fine. But I'm sorry. we might want to think about it for tomorrow. Yes. yes. I will do the best that I can today. But I don't know if I can get us through this without a little bit of help. Well, let's try. <laughs> it's the best we can do. You make your way into the area known as the Umbral Basin. Um, a few hours pass as you kind of draw further and further away from the border. And after about two hours, um, the border's gone from you. And it, you should be able to see it, but no. No, it's gone. Um, it, it just vanishes. There's some sort of, it's, it's almost like a fog that's just rolling through this place and it's thick, dense clouds. At, at points, it kind of swirls down upon you, like almost as if it's moving, like being driven at you. And you find yourselves as a group kind of just consumed by this dark fog. And for a moment, you, you kind of can only, despite being only a few feet away from each other, you can almost not even see each other. You can only call out and see vague shapes in the darkness. I stop us the first time that that happens, mm -hmm. and I take out the rope from my pack, mm -hmm. and I tie it around all of our waists. Yes. Oh, good idea. I'm also going to grab someone's hand, mm. just because I want to hold someone's hand. So that, that will definitely keep you all together. However, uh, should you end up in combat, that means you are all kind of grappled and immobilized. You can move a little bit from your current space, but you won't be able to go anywhere like in a coordinated fashion, just so you know. I mean, that certainly works. If it means an extra works. action to cut ourselves yeah. free, then it means an extra action to cut ourselves free, mm -hmm. but I am not losing you in this storm. We could just do what they do with school children, which is the first person holds the rope. We all just hold it in our hand. That's true. We so that way we can just it. drop it. That works too. Instead way. of... Everybody yeah. hold on. Don't let go. I like that. Okay. 
Now, does the, I mean, it's either that or the buddy system, right? Yeah. I mean, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Does the low light vision help? A little. Yeah. It, 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 it lets you see a bit further in this gloom. Okay. But not a lot. Any light sources you have with you also seem very dim. They just don't seem to illuminate very far. This whole place really doesn't seem to like light. This is a wretched place. I don't like it at all. I'm going to take the other flame out just because I want to have the fire. You draw it out and um, the flames kick on as they always do, but they, they seem so pale and thin here. They, I mean, it, it works, but it doesn't really illuminate very much. That's okay. I just want to see it. All right. As long as it's there. So um, you journey like this for the rest of the day, and uh, it's it's hard going. It doesn't feel like you're making good progress. Uh, who is leading you? Is that is that Liz? Uh, for at least an hour, I was definitely leading us using my my uh, my goggles of night okay. to see in the dark. And I'll take second watch. Mm -hmm. Quite go to darkness. I've got low light vision, mm -hmm. so. Okay. As um, two, the three of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but but as you were being navigated through, was it was it was it Liz who it was guiding been, the way? Yeah. All right, so can I get them to roll a, a, a survival check, please? <sighs> I feel like this is so very important. <laughs> <laughs> it was nicest today. I love the dice choice. Mm -hmm. I try not to spend too much time on it because I know it eats up a lot. Um, that is going to be a twenty-eight. 20, it's pretty good. Um, you're able to kind of keep your bearing, you think. I mean, and once again, I say you think. So uh, you, you, the, the thought here is you're in a valley. So if you kind of stay at the lowest point, at least that goes yeah. in the direction you need it to go. If you start rising up, that means you're heading up into a mountain. <clears throat> that it's not an easy thing to do because the valley floor isn't exactly just low and level. Mm -hmm. um, but it is at least a guiding path that gets you kind of going in the direction you need to go. So um, with that, you travel for a few hours uh, heading in that direction. Eventually it starts to get um, even darker. Like um, if, if this place has a day and a night, you may have just found it, oh, wow. but it doesn't really tell you too much um like it's not that dark but it is darker <laughs> like a weird dusk yeah it, it's it's gotten it's clearly gotten dark and you're all starting to get tired yeah. and the g navigating now is almost impossible everything is really hard to see but it's still not black it's still dark shadow i'd like to Iculus pulls out the ever-burning torch yeah, that, that lights up an area around five feet, ten feet around it, especially here. Um, and when one of those, like, clouds moves through, um, it just, it doesn't do anything. Well, I guess if we are feeling tired and it's so dark that we can't really navigate anymore, I don't know that we have much of a choice but to sit down and take a, take a rest. Is there, like, a place that we can sort of... Position I, ourselves like any high. kind of shelter or you're in you're in amongst rocks really i mean you're literally in like a mountain valley mm -hmm. there isn't like a lot of plants and trees here there isn't uh, m much in the way of overhangs or shelter and to top it off uh the the rocks here seem like they all seem sharp and grating like it, it's just a unpleasant place and um uh, as you are, are kind of stopped to kind of look around, you hear some weird howl mm -mm. off in the mountains somewhere. How far around away does it sound? It's hard to say. Uh, out here, the sound is weird, too. Even your voices sound really flat and kind of tinny when you talk to each other. Like, this place eats up sound as well. It, it, it's not super close nearby, um, but it does sound like some sort of like yowl, like. Uh, I want to put. I want to find an outcropping of rock that we can put at our back. Okay. So that if anything does come up uh, on us, it will come up on from our front, so we'll be able to see it. We also need to look for the three trees that are. Yes, I don't think that we're going to find it in this current situation. But I've been keeping my eyes out for it. Okay. 
Before we take a rest in front of us, I'm going to put an alarm down. Okay. So, so you gather yourselves up against uh, a rock. You spend a little bit of time finding a boulder that you can at least put your back to. Um, and you all kind of bed down. Um, I'm assuming you didn't bring like heavy tents and stuff like that with you. Only no. what was given to us. Oh, and we probably would have only taken what we could carry from that. Yeah, the easiest thing to carry would be just like bedrolls and stuff. You can, you could carry the tents, but it will load you down. Yeah. What about my, in my, even in my bag of holding? Oh, you, could, you could pack some in there if you want to bring tents. Yeah. Yeah. We should Lady Raven up. gave us some. Mm -hmm. A watch though? Yeah. I oh, definitely. Watch. Sure, definitely watch it. Well, either that or leave them on the horses, because the horses had saddlebags that yeah. I'm assuming you left on the horses. You didn't bring yeah. saddlebags. Yeah, not the saddlebags, but... But we do have the bag of holding, so we could have put at least one tent. Yes. Yeah. One's good. One is fine if we're going to be doing a rotating watch. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm no good at this time of the day, mm. so I think I might have to take last watch. I can take first. I'll take second watch. I'll do third. Middle of the night. I'll do fourth. All right. You divide up uh, up your time and um, break out some hardtack and whatnot and try and get some rest. This place is unnatural. Uh, every every time you kind of doze off, you hear some weird, like, noise somewhere in the canyon. And it, it seems at first oddly distant, but then it sounds like there's like a rock falling down the mountainside. And at first it sounds kind of thunderous and a boom. And then as it gets closer, it just sounds like, you know, something about the size of a, of a you know, a, a head or something, you know, something about this big uh, tumbling down the mountain. And then you just hear it kind of clatter, probably not very far away. Mm. And it, it, it's just, it messes with you. You can't, <laughs> you can't quite make out where it is or yeah. where it's coming from. And the, there are these, strange calls they're like they sound almost like a it's it's the best way to describe them is like a yowl like like um does it sound like that is happening in any kind of a pattern like maybe they are calling to each other i mean maybe but there's no there's no like rhyme or reason to it it's not like you get two and then one or anything like that right it's it's it if it's anything it's the standard calls of creatures calling out to each other okay. right so um you know just okay. like how I, kind of how animals make noises right mm -hmm. um and uh you begin to have watch who's on third watch again Ox in hand, <laughs> cross-legged at the front of the tent, yeah. with just my head out. I'm sleeping <laughs> holding the ever flame, like always. You're um, at uh, the kind of edge of the tent, kind of yeah. just sitting at the edge mm -hmm. with the with the flap open so you yeah. can see out. Um, it does limit your view, but you know you have the rock wall to one side, so mm -hmm. at least it's, it's helping you on that. And um, uh, about 15 minutes ago, you heard... Um, uh, another one of these yowls, um, but yeah, it seemed kind of close, but not yeah. like right on top of you. It just kind of seemed kind of echoing in the canyon above you. Above? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay. like I said, you're in a cavern, or, or sure. not a cavern, a canyon. Sure. Um, okay. Well, then when I heard the one that was closer from above, I'm going to get out of the tent. Not too far, but start sort of inching my way up the boulder to see if I can see any movement coming from the rocks okay. where we're up against. You um, inch your way out of the tent and look up at the boulder. And there... At the top of the boulder, you're like, was the boulder that shape? And then you're like, oh no, it's not that shape, it just moved. There is a dark form 
perched atop the bowl, the boulder. And just as you kind of spot it, it leaps down at you. The thing that emerges out of the shadow looks like a mountain lion, but it is entirely gray. And uh, it, as it uh, leaps out, you can see streaming out of its mouth is shadow. And uh, its eyes are just black orbs. And it snarls and yowls at you as it leaps down to attack. And can right. I get everyone to roll initiative? Right. But as, as, as that's happening, you're rolling initiative because I yell, we've got company! <laughs> yeah. I the yowl that close gave it away entirely, but... Oh, y'all woken up. <laughs> yeah, I just... Oh! <laughs> All right. Yes, okay, okay. That's not bad. That's probably the best I've rolled so far. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. Pathetic we are. Pretty bad. All right. Uh, Linnaeus, what do you got? 25. 25. Very good. Uh, Tario, what do you got? 23. Uh, Liz? <laughs> 20. <laughs> Omelet? 24. Oh. Iculus? The champion is back, baby. Oh. 26. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Wow, we ended up with a 26, a 25, a 24, and a 23. All right. Um, awesome. Well, that makes it simple. Uh, okay. So, uh, Iculus. Um, so, here's the thing. Everyone who is asleep, um, you are woken up by this. Uh, but here on this first round, you are going to lose uh, two actions um, as you kind of... One, just to wake up, right? Mm -hmm. you, you just need to be like, what the hell? And gather your senses. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, obviously, at that point in time, you're still prone. You're in a tent. Mm -hmm. uh, getting up and getting out of the tent is going to be at least one more action. Yeah. So I, figure, I figured we, um, I wouldn't have time for a battle cry in this moment. So. Yeah. <laughs> you wake up Wait, screaming. <laughs> you yawn in the yeah. morning. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so I'm going to start with I'm going to start with Aculus, but yeah, you're you're down a little bit. Okay. So I've already this two actions spent out. The yeah, back. and that's just to get out of the tent with weapon in hand. You're not wearing armor, by the way. You wear heavy armor. You can't sleep in that. Oh my god. So your your AC is is down a bit. Of course. Uh, it's a 19. Okay. Um. Well, to set the scene, uh, you come out of the tent and there is this shadowy mountain lion uh, right in the middle of the camp. It is right in front of you. You swing uh, once uh, at it. You kind of burst out of your tent and just swing, um, but that does not manage to hit. Linnaeus. Uh, running out. Okay, so you are now down to just one action. Um... How far away am I from Omelet and the beastie cat? Um, outside of your tent, um, yeah, it's like 10 feet away. Okay, uh, I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to pull out my wand. Mm -hmm. Then that's it. Okay. <laughs> done she that, that get it that, out of the little wand That case. would be it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Omelet, you are fully armed and armed. Yeah, because I was you're on watch. watch. Well, I'm swinging. Okay. This thing came at me. It is right on top of you. Like on top of me? or like No, no, no. It's just okay. right, right next to you. I didn't know if it had literally bounced. No, it tried, but it, it, it landed just short of you. Ha! Twenty-nine. A twenty-nine uh, will hit. Woo! Yeah, cleanly. Nice. Oh, <clears throat> let me see if it's a hit, actually. Yeah, that hits. It's kind <laughs> of hard to see. It's hard to see. Yeah, the smoke that pours out of it makes it kind of indistinct and concealed. And it's black with black eyes. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's with gray. Dark vision. Gray is yeah. Dark vision doesn't help at all. Nope. All right. Well, if I can't see you very well, maybe they can. Rage. All right. <laughs> uh, so uh, you uh, kick in rage. And it takes a second. Oh, check the stone is there. It's there. 
And 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 just as you like are like, what's going on? It envelops you. Oh, sleeping on the job, are we? Guess I was on watch for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bleh. Oh, she can wow. speak from their eyes. Sixteen, uh, and I'm going to make this positive damage. I'm setting positive because it's evil. A sixteen to hit. Six. No, no, no. Oh, that's right. Yeah, sorry. You had a clean damage. Yeah, sorry, sixteen damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, it takes sixteen damage. Okay. When I when I hit it with the with the ghostly uh, rune on it, the ghost touch, does it do the same thing that the dreams one did? No. It doesn't become more solid. Nope. Okay. That's no, it's when you hit it, it is a fully solid oh. creature. It's just surrounded and cloaked by shadow. Whoa. Freaky. That's pretty. Yeah, that that's it. Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, that will be five. Twenty-one. A twenty-one will hit. <gasps> well, maybe. Let me check. No. Whoa. You thought you hit it, but you just swung through shadow. Whoa. <sighs> Uh, that this one's a smoky bitch. <laughs> that, is the, <laughs> that is the end of Omelette's turn, Toriel. Um, Lost one action for sleep. Yes. Um, I'll get up, grab my, uh, grab my things, and go outside. Mm-hmm. And with my last action, I guess I will cast Inspire Courage. Very good. At this point. <laughs> The shadow lions. Lions? What? Oh, Close. no. Sorry, what? There's two more that come padding into camp. Oh, of no. course. Jesus. No? Do they set off my alarm? Yes. Okay, good. As a matter of fact, the there. first one did, oh. so. Yeah. Well, then I should. No, it did when it landed oh, in the camp, which sense. was the same part, same time when it yowled anyway, so it. It, it, it was its own alarm. Uh, the lion and the alarm all made a noise at the yeah. exact same time. Going to. Sounds like the beginning of a joke. It does. <laughs> so um, the, uh, the one that's on omelet is going to try and bite. Uh, and that is going to be an armor class 24. Which does not hit. Yeah, you're in armor. Uh, and then is going to swipe at you with a claw. No, that's not going to do it either. Uh, in the last attack, no, 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 the penalty's too big. Um, so it does swipe at you a bunch of times, but it can't seem to connect. I've um, got smoke too. Just, yeah, yeah, it just <laughs> didn't roll well enough on that first attack. Um, the second one uh, comes uh, flying into the camp and is going after, let's see, uh, can't be this because you're still uh, in a tent. Uh, so it's going to be Linnaeus. Okay. Um, comes... Charging up to you, armor class 28. Oh, yes. I suppose. Ooh, and it gets pack attack. Mm. What? Yeah. Uh -uh. When multiples are uh, uh, near each other, they attack with more ferocity. Great. Um, so that's going to be, well, that's max damage. Uh, oh, 12, no. 18 points of damage. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. And then it okay. grabs you. Super. The um, so it has you grappled, okay, um, in its jaws. Okay, oh, all right, and then Great. the uh, third one is going after Iculus in his non armor. Oh boy, armor class 30 hit, no crit, no crit. Your AC is still above 20, even mm -hmm. without armor. Mm -hmm. Damn you, <laughs> <laughs> he's a buff boy, strong he's boy, right. yeah. Uh, uh, 17 points of damage. Okay. Uh, and it is going to grab you as well. Um, so, uh, that is what they do. Uh, they all come in snarling and howling, uh, and biting at you. Uh, Liz. Right. So, what I want to do is, because I'm currently in the tent, I have some range on them, I believe, yes? You do, but you, much, can't, but you can't see any of them, though. That being said, I have hunted aim, or hunter's aim, which means their concealed condition does not affect me. 
That is true. But right now, you would have to fire through the tent to hit them. If I, I, I don't want to fire through the tent. I want to like just come up to the flap. Of oh, okay. And shoot out from the door. Yeah, I sure. That's the the the, 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 the All right. Tent. That that'll then, still that'll still cost you a little bit to kind of get in position because right. you were laying there prone. Right. That's fine. Get my stuff. Go to the lip of the tent. Oh, uh, you have one action after you're ready. So uh, I'm going to set my hunt prey mm -hmm. on the one that is currently attacking Omelet. Okay. Top of the order. You hear a voice call out from the mountain range above. Yes, yes, my precious, kill them all. And uh, then you hear words echoing from above and uh, the world down around you, there is a blast of kind of gray flame. Can I get oh. everyone to roll me a reflex save? Oh, oh, oh. Is this magic? Wait. Yes. If we're, okay. Grappled, what is that? It doesn't change anything. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, are you? No, take that. Okay. Take it. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, all right, I mean, okay. You only get to spend one. I know. Okay. So I have something new that I guess now would be a great time to mention Explicit. because it affects a specific save that I have. Um, <coughs> I am now a master at reflex saves. Okay. So if I roll a success on this, it is a critical su success and I take no damage. Okay. Yeah, that, that is correct. How does a natural 18 plus 17 do ya? Uh, 35 means that you are not taking anything from this. Great. Uh, evasion is going to totally save you. Uh, what does everybody else have? 27. Uh, 27 is a success. 21. 21 is a failure. Okay. Okay. I'm, uh, I haven't rolled yet. All right. Um, I have a reaction to this. Okay. So I am surrounded by my ancestors. Yeah. And I'm ancient blooded. Oh, all right. So I'm calling upon their guidance and protection. Okay. And they, they're, they're pretty resistant to magic. Okay. So um, I gain a plus one bonus to triggering saving throws if they're okay. magic. Yep, great. Thank goodness. 24. Uh, 24 is a dead on success. Oh. Ridiculous. This isn't a mental effect. So nope. No, this, none of that's gonna work for me. Um, it's gonna be a 22. Uh, that's going to fail. Those of you who fail, uh, take 23 points of cold damage. Cold damage. Cold damage. Oh, okay. Well, if, you're, if you don't have anything resistant to cold or anything, it's just damage. Take hit point damage. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, those of you who fail, take 23. Those who make, uh, take 11. And unless you take nothing. Um, uh, at the end of the round, a broiling darkness settles in as if it just kind of moved in on you. Um, the creature or just cold? No, you don't know. It, uh, after that blast clears, darkness just kind of swells into the camp like a, like a wall of shadow. You now are having a real hard time seeing anything around you. Iculus. Okay. Um, I'm going to, let's see. I still got the things on me. Yep. Yeah. So I'll smite evil. Yep. Um, I'm just going to swing the sword. Um, it's going to be a 25. A 25? Mm -hmm. uh, a 25 will hit? Uh, I think. Let me see. Yes. <laughs> what is that roll? I don't know. Shadow. Not a fun one. And... I'm gonna get the retribution on top of that. So that's gonna be a, so it's gonna be a 26. 26, so that's the weapon damage, that's the retribution, that's smite the evil. smite. Inspire courage. And inspire courage, all right, 26, all right. Stacks on, stacks on, stacks on. <laughs> Love it. Cool. All right. That's action uh, one. Yeah, no, you had to smite evil. That's, oh, that's right, so That was your action. first action, okay, so, so that was your second. You have one more. Ooh. It's going to be a 31. A uh, minus, is it minus what, five or 10? Minus five. Five, so 26. Misses. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> so we're still, uh, since you're the first person to go after this this darkness brawled on you, you can't see any of your friends anymore. You can see this shadow cat just because it's right next to you. But everybody else was not right adjacent to you, and you can't see anything anymore except for that thing. Everything else around you is just broiling darkness and shadow. Linnaeus. Going to spend all three of my actions. Does my healing font move up to a 4d10, or is it still Correct, three? it okay. is four now because you have, that. you have uh, fourth level spells. Going to just explode my font. Need to steal this. Steal it. Uh, everything within 30 feet is going to take this, and I think everyone's within 30 feet in a 30 feet burst of me. Do you think so the last I time think. you saw them? Okay, well, you let me know. <laughs> okay. Um, Eighteen points of healing and damage. Eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, well, that would do damage if they were undead, but they're not. So they heal instead. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, oh wow. God. You got to be kidding me. It's okay. I can fix it. The darkness here is making it really incredibly disorienting. None of, you're, the rest of you are not even really sure what's happening now. You can only hear cries in the shadows and darkness. That was Linnaeus, Omelette. That's me. <laughs> okay, well. And I should also yeah. note, now that that cat is out of the bag, yeah. as it were, um, hey. your positive damage <laughs> isn't doing anything to these, these, At all. these cats. No, I'm afraid not. At least it's still damaged. Is it's it though? not healing them? No, that's the question though. Is it doing it's, any damage to them? No, no. It, it, I mean, your your axe hit still hurts them. It's just the extra positive damage extra isn't positive. isn't hurting them because they're living creatures. Okay, so instead of three damage, it's just doing the two. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> that's not no damage. <laughs> okay. Uh, how tall? How high up is the 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 Gray flamey dude. You can't see him. Oh, I can't see him. No. What? There's a so voice figure. that Don't there was a, there was a voice oh, yeah. for a minute there. You might you think you might have seen something, but now this darkness that has enveloped you, sure. you can't see anything. You you're pretty sure you knew where he was coming from, though. You could just disengage and run off in that direction. Mm. We have to get rid of the caster. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. Because if, if he's the one doing this and commanding them, it might make them easier to hit and us easier to see them. So I would like to disengage from the cat. All right. Can I even see the cat still? Uh, you're right next to it, so you can see it while you're right next to it. Sure. I see, see its wounds right close up, and I'm like, nope. <laughs> and I assume that that thing did it. So I um, disengage, and uh, I go to that... Uh, I know where the boulder was. I know where I am and where the boulder was. So I go to the boulder yeah. um, and attempt to sort of high jump onto it and or crawl. Well, so you make your way that way. Yeah. And uh, you spend your first action moving that way. And you're moving through darkness, so you're not moving super fast. Dark vision isn't actually helping you here. No. This, this, this is blackness. Is ten, 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 tangible. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you're moving through a, a, an area of just blackness and darkness. Mm -hmm. And you, you kind of stumble forward a bit. You get a little turned around. You end up finding a boulder and kind of crawling up around it. Give me a survival skill check. <laughs> a survival? Yeah. I need you to kind of give me a roll to see how well you navigate this darkness. Come on, that 20. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? That would be a eight. God, I don't right. have survival. <laughs> I know you don't. You go, I always go ahead of you. You go wandering off into the darkness. Oh, no. um, at the end of your first action, you have not found anything. Would you like to spend another action? Yeah. What do you got? I do it again. I mean, I need to okay. find... I'd, Give me another survival check as you wander further. This is going to be terrible. 
It's not a one, it looks like a one. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say. That one's a ten. Okay. Um, you um, stumble around for a bit, and at the end of your second action, you still haven't found anyone. And I do mean anyone. You haven't found any cats, you haven't found any tents, you haven't found any weird spellcasters. Well, I know I'm not going up, so this is wrong. Mm. Do I still hear people? You can hear the sound of battle, but it sounds indistinct. You're kind of having a hard time locating where it's coming from. You're pretty sure it's over to your left, but you're not sure. You've kind of been wandering around the rock now for a bit. You've got one more action. I'm wandering around the rock. Well, you kind of you went in that direction, and there's rocks in your way. You're in a you're in a rocky valley. So, like, you got to a rock, and you were like, I think it's around this way, and that didn't get you to anyone. You can't see much no, of No, but anything. I'm touching rocks. Yeah, absolutely. I want to climb the rocks. Sure, yeah, and you can climb up on them, too, right? But but once again, you're still not 100% sure where the sounds were coming from, and you're kind of just trying to feel your way around a darkened area that's unfamiliar to you. Sure, but so. up is better than around. Sure, yeah, and, and that's fine. You can yeah. climb up over the rock, but then you're on a different rocky escarpment, and you make your way over that way, trying to find this the source of this this caster. And you think you're heading in the right direction, but you just haven't found him yet. Well, there's literally nothing else to be done but do it again. All right, give me one more survival check, please. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, you begin making your way and you think you've grown closer back to the camp and the battle, but you don't think you're any closer to finding this mysterious figure out in the darkness. Still better than being lost out in the middle of nowhere. Tariel. Oh gosh, um, inspire courage, um, and then, oh, so I, we can't see any of these cats right now. Like. Uh, unless one of them is attacking you or you are attacking them, that means you are adjacent to them. Uh, otherwise, you can't see them. Um, I'm going to try something. I don't know if it's going to work. Okay. Because this is magical darkness. But I'm going to try, I'm going to cast dancing lights. So, you cast dancing lights. And the globes of light cut through the darkness. <gasps> They, they don't shine as bright as you would hope. They feel diminished. Mm -hmm. But at least in the area right around you, the darkness is abated. <sighs> um, this, unfortunately, isn't quite helping Omelette yet because Omelette has wandered off into the darkness and isn't in the radius anymore. Oh. Um, however, that does do that. And that's two of your actions. And you uh, and, and I did yeah. inspire Kirk. All right. So uh, that is the end of Tariel's turn. Next up are the shadow cats. Now I had one that is facing off now against uh, Iculus, mm -hmm. um, and it is going to swipe at you with its jaws. Oh, sorry, did it have you grabbed? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, no, that was. I think grabbed both of us. No, I think it was just. It Linus. didn't grab me. Oh. Yeah. Um. Well, I've got you now uh, because that's a crit. <laughs> What? Yeah. What a horrible reveal. Yeah. <laughs> but I've got you now. <sighs> How about no? Yeah. Take 22 points of damage as its jaws lock onto you. There goes that healing you gave me. Yeah, um, hand them. And then it's going to uh, oh, yeah. rake at you with its claws now that you're flat footed. Um. Armor class 22. Uh, since I'm not wearing armor, then that's a hit. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a D8. Oh, I still get the pack attack. Feels bad, man. Nine. Uh, take 15. Uh, oh, and it's about the second action to grab you. Okay, so that's all three. Uh, the second one is on Linnaeus. Yeah. And it already has you grappled, so it's just going to... Uh, uh, it's going to uh, uh, continue to bite at you. Uh, that is going to be a, let's see, that's a 25. Oh, it just makes it. Iculus applies liberating step. Thank you. Okay. Um, that will give you a free check to break out of the grapple. Ooh. Um, 
So you can attempt an acrobatics check, an athletics check, or just an unarmed attack. Your unarmed well, attack is not going to be a great option. We're going to do acrobatics. Acrobatics, Because right. I'm surprisingly good at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, no, but I'm not. I mean, it's a 16. Okay. Uh, that's not going to be enough to break you free. Uh, and I'll reduce the damage by nine, so you're only going to take eight. Okay. All right. Uh, I continue to the grab, and then it's going to attempt to rake you with the claw. That's going to hit as well. Um, and that is going to be nine, uh, 15 more points of damage as it, <laughs> as it rips and tears into you. Super. All right. So the final uh, shadow cat that was fighting omelet uh, no longer has an omelet uh, to, to take a bite out of. Uh, so it's going to look for a different delicious snack. Uh, and it turns around and is going to go after Tariel. Oh, uh, no. It spends an action to move up to you. It uh, attempts to bite you with its jaws, but that, I think, is going to be too low. I'm going to wager that an 18 is going to miss. Oh, that's way too low. All right. So it bites at you, but you you nimbly kind of dodge out of the way. Uh, frustrated with this, it tries to take a claw swipe at you, but I roll a one. Hoo-hoo! All right. Nice. Well, I guess that's not going to work. Um, so the shadow cats have gone. They're yowling and, and pouncing around this place. These things are big, by the way. They're like eight or nine feet long. These are like the size of full-grown mountain lions, but they're this gray and mottled color. They're, they're, they have kind of striping on them a little bit, but it's just patches of gray, and they just kind of emit this smoke that makes it really hard to see. Liz, it is your turn. I have my bow in one hand, so I don't think I have to drop it. Um, no. But it will probably get dropped anyway because I am going to pull a potion from my pack and I'm going to drink it. One, two. Okay. And then Le Seppard is going to make a visit. <gasps> oh, what? all right. Oh. Yeah. That will. Yeah. Yeah. That's for a cat. That, How about that? That will. <laughs> <laughs> well, the rhyme is just the icing on the cake. All right. So uh, you uh, do probably drop the bow because uh, mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's not Because as to I be. begin to transform. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, I am going to attack the cat that is after Tariel. Okay. Um, so uh, you're going to need to move up to it. So next round, you're going to be able to, yep. to tear into this thing. Gonna yes. do it. Dope. <laughs> Love it. I have not attacked it a single time during this entire combat, but I'm having a good time. <laughs> Top of the order. Omelette. You feel... Is it me? I talked to Oh yeah, I know who goes <laughs> versus oh, the he player has it character. Down. Oh. He has it written down. Okay. But there's someone else who gets to go uh, first. Oh no! Oh, first. oh no! Oh no! Mazel oh, tab. this isn't. This is. Oh no! <laughs> oh dear! You hear kind of. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't kill them though. I need their life essence. Great. And um. Skeksis. <laughs> yes. The. You then hear more shouts and calls in a language that's that's incomprehensible. Omelet. Yes. You feel a befuddlement taking over your mind. You are starting to lose your senses. You're starting to become confused about which direction to go and what to do. Can you give me a will save? This is more magic. It is. Hate it, blood. I don't feel... Um, I'm befuddled. <laughs> okay. Unfuddle me. <laughs> <laughs> Plus one to my will. Nat 20. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, uh, sir. Well, that's, that's going to be a critical success. So uh, I guess I don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> oh, um, Put that away. Oh, wow. You hear a voice crawl up from above. Blast! <laughs> Iculus, it is your turn. Okay. Still got the cat on me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to smite evil. Okay. And... Yeah, I'm just going to swing at him. That'll work. So it's going to be a 33. A 33 on the cat that has been battered and healed and battered some more. A 33, 
is a critical hit. Oh. Yay! Oh. Very nice. Please take it down. All right. Plus, it hit me, so it's gonna get the retribution too. Yep. So uh, add your bonus of you know a full total of ten, and then uh, double it. That's gonna be twenty-eight. So it's fifty-six. Fifty-six damage. Um, your blade. That's nice. <laughs> Is about to slice right through it. Let me just check to see whether or not it hits. Sorry. Oh, should have oh, done this before you rolled. I should have done this before you rolled. I'm a monster. I'm a monster, but I need to check and see if you miss. That's gonna hit. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. I can't take I mean, uh, I'm just an impartial arbiter of sure, rules. Right. It is my job to make sure that they are followed evenly uh -huh. and fairly. Yes. So much benevolence. So I guess you hit. Uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, your blade, you just slam your blade into the back of this cat, and you hear bone crunch and break. It yowls and falls over dead. Yes. Um, that one has perished. The other two, however, look entirely unhurt. Oh, no. Um, that uh, was your first and second action, Iculus. You only have one remaining. Okay, um, and then there's the one that's on Linnaeus. Yeah, but you, you're gonna have to move to get over to either one of them. And that's what, can I flank the cat? Uh, yeah, you could move into a flank, yeah, sure. Okay. They're pretty tight, tightly packed in here, yeah. All right. um, all right, so you move into a flank, Linnaeus. Yeah, here's the thing, I'm terrified right now because I am in a lot of pain and I healed them. Um, they appreciated that, by the way. I'm sure they did. Grateful. Well, now I'm going to do a lot of damage to them uh, because I'm going to call down my divine wrath. All right. Choosing good. I'm shocked. To hurt evil. I'm assuming that helps. I have to make what is it? A fort saver? Fortitude. Yep. And you just deal another. Yes. Uh, first one's going to fail. Second one. Excellent. He's second. Gonna fail. Oh, also failed. second. Is the is our friend within this forty foot burst? No. Okay. Well, that's fine. So, <gasps> no, that's just a one. Mm. I got really excited. I know, so did I. I saw the 10. Uh, eight, nine, 10, 13. 13. Are they also sick? Yeah, but they're also sick. And they're flanked, right? They're sick one. Yep. Um, and then with my last action, I'm just gonna try and desperately wriggle free. Okay, gonna try and break the grapple. Yeah. Go ahead and make me that roll. Do an acrobatics check again. <laughs> You try and wiggle free, but fail to get out of its strong jaws. Um, actually, you know what? I And once again, I have to be uh, on the fair and up and up to cast a spell while grappled. I need you to make me a flat check. It is DC five. <laughs> Take it, I don't care. It was a three, that's a 10. All right, the spell goes off, okay. So, uh, you can't say I didn't make the rules because he did make the rules. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I could blame this one you? on Mark or Logan back in the office. Okay. Um, oh, I'm going in the box. That. <laughs> Close the box. It's fine. Not using that dice again. It's fine. <laughs> that was Linnaeus. Omelette. You're still kind of up in the yep. darkness. Here's three th survival dice rolling uh, do, all at once. Do me a favor and roll them one at a time, just because if you succeed, then you don't need to spend the other two to. Good point. Yeah, and, and we would need them in <gasps> order. So, okay, yeah, rapid fire. A... No. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. No. <laughs> Running around in the dark. Oh my god. Next. Omelette. You, you hear <laughs> vague Hi, you hear vague <laughs> cursing in dwarven from somewhere up in the darkness. You're not sure where It's not uh, vague, it's however, pointed. <laughs> I will say this. By your third action, you come out of whatever sphere of darkness you were in. It was very large and part of like a large cloud of darkness that broiled in on the camp. Um okay. but you make it out of it and uh, at, at the very end of your turn, you can kind of scan around. Um, Where the you, hell am I? You're, yeah. you're, you, you can definitely see the area of darkness where your friends are. Uh, sure. Unfortunately, they're in a bubble of light inside the larger bubble of darkness, so you can't see that. <laughs> um, but uh, looking around up the hillside, you can spot this kind of crazed, gaunt, 
human man perched up on the rocks, kind of down on his haunches, <laughs> throwing spells. He's yeah. wearing like tattered rags and robes and he's got like this staff and he's like, he's like so gaunt, like you can see all of his bones uh, through his body and he's cackling and laughing and he's missing most of his teeth. Um, mm. Corn for you. Probably got pretty bad scurvy. They don't get much citrus here. All right. Um, so <laughs> that was omelet. Tariel. Uh, so I have a cat on me. Yes. Yes. Um, well, inspire courage. I'm going to keep that up. All right. Um, I'm going to cast telekinetic projectile. So I'm going to pick up like a rock. There's plenty of them. And I'm going to slam it into this cat. Ooh, that's, that's nice. Good. That's real nice. Uh, that is a 19 plus 15, so that is a 34. Crit. Yay! Oh, nice. Get it, get it. Um, and so now that I am fourth level, this is going to be 46. Um, Ooh, mm -hmm. that's bad for me. <laughs> yep, that Should is... Be. Poor kitty. Uh, bad shadow kitty. Bad. <laughs> well... 16, 17. And that times, will apply because this is an attack. Times two. So, so 34. 34 points of damage to this cat in front of me. It's also an attack. Hold on. Oh. That'll hit. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, uh, yes. Shadow concealment. Fun for everyone. Okay, so uh, that was all three of Tariel's actions. The cats go. No. The first one has uh, Linnaeus grappled. It's going to attempt to bite you with its jaws to continue the grapple. Um, armor class 20. No. Oh, it's going to work. All right, it's, if it doesn't get you with the second one, it may end up releasing you at the end of the round. Uh, armor class 23. No. Get wrecked. Get wrecked, kitty cat! It's gonna try and hit you with a claw. No. 20. No! Natural 20. Oh. oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just a claw, though. Um, but it may not even be Let a... Let me see it, though. I don't think it's a crit, though. Why? Because I think it's only a 23, which is a miss, but because I rolled a 20, it'll get bumped up to a hit, so it still hits you, it just doesn't crit. Oh, I get it. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, mm. that's how that works. Okay, so not quite as much damage. It's good. 10, oh. 16 points of damage. <laughs> Pretty rare that that rule comes into play, but that's how that works. All right. Uh, that was the first one. The yes. second one is fighting Tariel. Yeah. Uh, although Icarus yeah. is up there as well. So it hasn't really have. paid any attention to you. Well, I'm on the one with Linnaeus. Oh, you're on the one with Linnaeus, yeah. <laughs> that one hasn't paid any attention yeah. to you yet. Uh, the one on Tariel is going to attempt to bite you with its jaws. And I swear this die rolls well until I'm attacking Tariel. And then it's like, no. They and, like me uh, too And much. They, they like the bard too much. A two. Really. That's what you get. Really. That's really. what you and get. I'm going to claw at you. Okay, forget it. All right. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. The cat looks really frustrated. He's like, meow, meow, meow. <laughs> and just, and just can't. Bad kitty. Can't. Yeah. Bad. Oh, yeah. And down. <laughs> out of the sidelines. Liss. I move my hunt prey to that cat. Okay. And then I bite it. Okay. <laughs> yes. That is going to be a 28. A 28? Mm -hmm. uh, will hit. Will it? Oh, look at you, reminding me in advance so that I don't spoil the fun later. It does. Yeah. All right. Nope, that's not the right one. We've reached that point where the players are calling me out on rolls. Well, it would have been 29. <laughs> I don't know if that makes a difference, but, you know. No, it doesn't change it to a All right, cool. Um, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 points of damage? Yep. All right. And then I have my claw attack. Which probably won't hit. That's only a sixteen. No, that will not. All right. All right. Um, you uh, you uh, snarl and bite at the the beast. Um, it uh, it turns its attention to you. Okay. Um, but that is the end of your turn. Top of the order. Crazed. Crazed wizard up in the mountain sees you emerge from the darkness and is like. Oh! 
<laughs> uh, and uh, he says, <laughs> ah, well, I'll let the cats deal with them. You're mine. And he kind of waves his hands around and uh, unleashes from his fingertips. Oh. Nine magic missiles. Oh, oh my no. God. What? Omelette has a horrible flashback oh. of being in a shop and almost buying a shield that protects against <laughs> this very oh, no. thing and thought, what are the odds that would ever be necessary? Oh, no. Oh, no. So it's going to take me a minute to add up all these dice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can't try, you can't kill Omelette twice. Uh. Watch him. <laughs> Don't give him any ideas. On yeah. Him. Although, have you taken damage? No. You healed. Uh, take thirty-two points of damage as these missiles just hammer home one after another. I feel like it could have been worse. What's that? I said it could have been worse. Right? Yeah, it could have been. To be fair, I just back down to the health I got before I leveled up. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it? Well, that. He, he's like, ha ha, and sees that you aren't stopped by it. And he's like, oh, wow, well, all right. And then he moves his hands. Oh, actually, that was all three of his actions. Never mind, he doesn't move his hands anywhere. Um, Iculus, it is your turn. All right. Uh, smite evil against the cat that's on Linnaeus. Help me. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I should make it known she's looking very bad. You are. Yep. Okay. Uh, lay on hands. Why? I thank you. Lay on hands <laughs> after the smite. So it's my last action. So you smite, attack, and then lay on hands. Uh, yeah, I guess I could, or whatever order that needs to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got you. Thank you. Okay. 27. Uh, 27 is a hit. No retribution, but. Do you have to visit, check on it? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, thanks, everybody. God. Look at me, I keep forgetting that. Nope. Perfect. Nope. For me? No attack. Missed. Why did we remind him? I think because so. we're uh -oh. nice. And we have a fight. Yeah, deserves hero points. <laughs> Listen, <sighs> I feel like do you want to see no, how No, I'm not much doing that again. The last I'm, time I did that, that came back to bite. I'm you. helping you. Do you want to see how much health I have and I'm helping you? I don't want to see how much bad. health you have. That's well, now bad. you have 24 extra points. Thank you. Because I was at 13. No, I don't want to see how much health you have. That'll make me feel bad. You said 24? All right. Feel <laughs> bad. Do you want to see it? There's the number. Nope. Not looking. I refuse. has feelings? No. 24. <laughs> no, I buried those away long ago. It was part of the right okay. of becoming a game designer. Uh, Linnaeus, it is your turn. Um, thank you. Uh, well, I just realized that I have this fun thing called battle medicine, which is just a single action. And I also have assurance medicine, so I can heal myself in battle for one action. You can. Guess what I'm going to do? That. Are you kidding me? That is undoubtedly a manipulate action. Can you go ahead and bounce me a d20 to see if it... Oh, wait, no, I failed my grapple. Never mind, I'm not grappling you anymore. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, yep. Uh, <laughs> no. No! Jeez. Yep. Okay, so Never mind. I'll do that later. Um, okay, with my last two actions... Not my day. <sighs> not your day. Listen, Buster. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I see... This is so dumb of me. Can I see... The, the magic user on the boulder. Nope. Okay, cool. Then I'm just gonna cast light on my breastplate. Okay. Um, that certainly will create a kind of bubble of light around you. It's yeah. not much different than the bubble of light from the dancing lights above you. But, but it will allow you to move independently if you need to. Yeah. Um, Do I blind the yeah, cat? Yeah, does the cat affected at all by the light? It's right in his face. Um, he doesn't seem to like that. Well, uh, you kinda, and they, they both of them kind of shy away a bit. Good. Um, that was Linnaeus, Omelette. My turn. He's about two moves away from you across uneven ground. Two moves? Yeah, but it's difficult terrain up here. Don't matter for me. Elvis. Uh -huh. Also, I'm a rock runner. No, this is my home. Oh, That's no. true. <laughs> he, he's like, so didn't charge that motor. He's like papering around up there. You'll never get me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just boo. <laughs> I love that. He looks rather shocked at how quickly you made it. He's like, what the? That? As, as you get up to him, he stinks. He smells like he hasn't bathed in months. I've smelled oh. worse. 
Ooh, yeah. Thirty-three. Yeah, that hits. That's a crit. Yeah! <laughs> oh, specializations. Oh, don't forget, oh, don't forget those. Oh. Don't um, forget those. You fly, hear fly, fly, in the back of your fly, head. Fly, fly, fly. Finally, you turn to me. Oh no! Mm. No 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 no! Wait, What's your crit? What did you just say? <laughs> but nothing. The axe whispered to you. Finally, you, you returned to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but. Sorry. Can I tell you what this one is called? <laughs> but yeah, it, what is it? Decapitation. Oh no! <laughs> yes. Triple <You're> damage. <laughs> the crit effect. You must make a fortitude save or instantly die. Oh my god! So this is going to use your uh, class DC. So what's your barbarian class DC? For fortitude. No, what's your barbarian class to see? It's beneath your ability scores. You don't use this for almost anything, but it will be used for this. My class DC? Yeah. 23. 23, that's what he has to roll. Can I spend a hero point? Do I have- No! no! You're not a hero! No! So basically- Look at, I have like seven, <laughs> yeah. so it's fine. They're not yours! Oh, what a horrifying image. Just boo, you've returned to me. Shink! Yeah. Oh, yeah, you slice his head right off. It goes bouncing down the mountainside. That's so hot. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, but oh, no one got to see how cool that was. I felt it in his soul. <laughs> <laughs> I felt a dark light I did, and so did every member of my family. <laughs> <laughs> you were raging? I was raging. Yeah, your rage immediately ends. You are exhausted. <gasps> Next yeah. turn. <laughs> uh, it is Tariel's turn. You have no idea why that happened. Your rage just ended. <gasps> Tariel. Right. Wow. Does does the darkness disappear? Or anything? No. Okay. Well, then I'll just get I'll just get back to this cat. And then I'm gonna uh, tell it a uh, oh, telekinetic oh, projectile. Oh, that's real good. Um, at this cat again. Okay. Um, for a thirty-two. That's a crit. <laughs> and it hits. I just double <laughs> Girl. Okay. We were rolling so That's poorly really before. Damage. Tw wait. 22 doubled 44. Yeah, including okay. that. 44? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's the end of that guy. <laughs> um, your head, your your the piece of rock slams right into it he its head. It yowls, spins away, and falls into the dust. Dead. Oof. Nice. Yeah. Who's left? Just the cat. Just the one cat yeah. uh, that seems focused upon making a meal out of Linnaeus. I'll take care of it. Blind yourself on my breastplate. <laughs> it does look like it's squinting in that, and as a result, its first bite attack misses. Oh. -ho! Tries again. Ah, no. Saren Wright is watching you. <laughs> Come for me. And uh, you know what? With its third action, it's going to bolt. No. It oh, goes running. Okay. How far? Because I have something that I'm going to use on it that has quite a bit of reach uh, within 120 feet. Um, absolutely. So it moves 30 feet, which puts it just at the edge of the area of light that you have here. And then it's like half in, half out of the light and into the darkness. But that's that's it for its turn. List. Two action move. Prepare that fight. Yep. <laughs> I don't have hunt prey on this one, but I'll 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 try and take him out. Sure. Um, that's gonna be twenty six. Oh, that's a hit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that look. That look I love it. I love it. I love it. That hits. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> but concealment isn't really all that good. But yeah. you know, it's, it's worth checking. Are you sure? Nah, it's paid off a couple times. Um, not very high. Seven? Seven? Mm. This one's been hurt a little bit. Uh, all right. That's it. Uh, okay. Um, it is still trying to bolt out of here. Uh, let me take that marker off because that guy doesn't have, he, he lost his head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Iculus. Uh, now that I'm an expert in short bow, yeah. How far? Um, so it's it's about 
40 feet away from you or so, mm -hmm. um, you could uh, drop your sword, draw your bow. The drop would be free. Draw your bow for one action and then fire with the other two. All right. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Uh, you drop your sword, draw your bow, and fire twice. Yeah, go ahead. <coughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a 31. Uh, that is a hit and a crit. Ooh. And I just confirmed it. So, um, weapon specialization and a deadly D10. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't double the D10. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a 10, 12, 15. 15 damage. All right, your arrow uh, sinks into the cat. Um, it is still up and still trying to bolt out of here, but it looks very badly hurt. You do still have one more arrow. Go ahead. And it misses. All right. Uh, the arrow goes clattering off the stone, bouncing away into the darkness. That was Iculus. Linnaeus. Okay. Provided this hits, <clears throat> do you know what time it is? <laughs> is, it, is it searing light time? Oh, yes. It's searing <laughs> light time. Provided it hits. Provided it hits. My favorite time. My favorite time, too. <clears throat> 25. Hit. Okay. All right. Oh, it and is. I already confirmed it. Okay. it. Yeah. I rolled the die at the same time. Saving time. <laughs> ah, fire damage. Yeah. <laughs> 18 fire damage. Um, it's hard to tell what happens after that moment, but the cat yowls and tumbles off into the darkness and you don't hear anymore. Okay. Everything suddenly grows quiet. Omelet, you're up on the, the rock above you. The darkness that is enveloping them slowly moves away. It, it looks like a cloud um, that was kind of summoned and and drop down in the valley, but slowly it dissipates. It takes a little bit, uh, but the light sources remain after it slowly fades away. You're up there on the rock, exhausted. Um, your rage ended for no reason. Wait, what's on? Omelet? Where's Omelet? Uh, I'm on the rock. I, I'm, I take my stone out and hold it up. Are they in there? Uh, you look into the stone? Yeah. Looks like a rock. I'm up here. Do you need help coming down? No. Oh, of course. No, you don't. Uh. <laughs> don't, don't, cat. don't, don't. You just see her bounding down, avoiding the blood trail that the head landed, and she looks fine. Are you okay? Oh yeah, I just got lost. Oh. The darkness. Big. What, what happened that, up there? That other, th the, the other thing. Oh, I got him. Oh. One swoop. Oh. By the way, do you mind doing another alignment check on this thing? Yeah, of course. I'll do another one. <laughs> hey, Alyssa's a cat, by the way. <laughs> oh, you remember? <laughs> it happened once before. Right. A while ago. Doing what? cat things, um. like around the legs, kind of. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that's nice, that's warm. Sure, this thing is talking to me. Oh, if I do another detect alignment, do I feel anything? You don't detect anything. I don't like it. Well, what's it saying? Well, remember how I said it's got sort of a kink in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that tingy kink may be that, um, well, it seems to really like every time that I hit something. You know, like, it, like it's like in its blood. And then up there on the, on the cliff, a lot's happening. I feel awful. Oh no. It's okay. It happens every time, just usually not this quick. I, I have time to prepare usually for the weight of everyone. But um, when, it, when I was up there, it, it said something along the lines of it's coming back. What exactly did it say? The words are lost to you. I don't know. Just that it, Maybe I'm taking it back to its master or something. Ooh. You may want That's to... Not exactly. You may not want to use <coughs> that as much. Maybe only when necessary. Because it does it does deal a great amount of damage, but I, I have a feeling it comes at a cost. <laughs> I don't know what a cost is. 
You know, and that's scary. Um, I, before going to sleep, I would like to spend some time with that book. Okay. Um, you can start spending some time with the, the book, the holy I book of Zan Kuthan. See anything about this mentioned at all? But also just, yeah. you know, memorizing prayers and things to make us blend in. Um, Are there any symbols, like, to identify for maybe helping in the book of identifying in it? No. Check if there's anything about sky stones. Oh, look. Thanks. I sheathe it. You return back to your Wait. camp and I'll try and get some unsteady rest. Linnaeus, in the morning, mm -hmm. after your morning prayers, you do turn to the book because you still need more sleep this night. Yes. And to be honest, <laughs> this book is not exactly filled with bedtime stories. Um, so uh, you uh, you hold off on that, and, and the next morning, as everyone's preparing, you do start looking to the book and trying to find answers. He just puts the armor back on them. Not yeah. going to do that again. You don't find any mention of an axe in there. This, this book is filled with hymns and litanies and aphorisms mm. about the Midnight Lord, about Zan Kuthan. The book itself is bound in a chain, and to open it, you have to unwrap the cha the book, in, uh, the chain from around the book, and the, the chain itself is bound into the spine. So the chains were kind of wrapped around it, um, and its like edge of a cover is covered in like razor sharp metal. This thing is a dangerous book to even open and use. Opening it, you ended up with cuts all over your fingers just getting it open. Gross. Okay, I'm going to start. <clears throat> Memorizing. All right. You continue the next day traveling through the Umbral Basin. Um, the journey uh, is slow going. You, to be honest, don't always find the right way. You find, even with expert navigation, even with kind of seeking out the right direction, you find that you are in dead ends and blind alleys kind of uh, all the time and have to double back and take a different path. The The problem is you can't get a good distance view in here. There's too many of these dark storms that are rolling through this basin. Um, it makes it impossible to navigate with ease. You have to kind of make educated guesses and, and hope they turn out for the best. They do with some frequency, but not always. I hate this place. I have never had such a difficult time navigating anywhere. <clears throat> Have I seen anything that looks like three trees on a rock? No. No, as a matter of fact, all the trees you've seen here are dead. Mm. And you this certainly haven't seen three of them. Fully sucks. What, what could this vision have been? I don't understand. If we can't find these three trees, then... Maybe one path we were on, it would have led us that way, but lots has happened. That's true. You continue making your way, and as you're having this conversation, you're kind of in this narrow ravine kind of area. It's like uh, the, the ground that you're in is led between these kind of giant pillars of rock, and you're kind of threading your way through them. In some cases, single file. And uh, uh, who would be in the lead? Liz? Right. Um, you're kind of making your way uh, forward, and uh, the rest of the group behind you, and up ahead, just as you're narrowing through this, and you, you just literally had this discussion, you get through this ravine, and up ahead, you see what looks like a, a, a rock on the, the side of the mountain. Um, it, 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 you usually can never see very far here, you know, at most uh, 100 feet or 200 feet, and then, it, and then it's shadow and darkness. Um, and up ahead on kind of the ridge line, you see what you're seeking? A boulder with what looks like the stunted dead uh, trunks of three trees that <clears throat> once grew around it. it their root bases uh, kind of tied and wrapped around it. It looks like the soil eroded away, leaving nothing but these dead trees anchored to this rock. Everybody, don't look now. What is I it? I think we found our allies. Oh, forget everything I just said about an hour ago. She did not lie. And as you are standing there, there's this rumble. Oh. Oh. Boom. 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 Oh, no, no. Omelette, was that you? Boom. No, I ate. And, like, you're in these narrow canyons of rock, and they're about maybe 15, 20 feet tall, and like little pebbles fall from above as oh, the, no. there's a vibration and a shake. Can I see anything? <gasps> Up ahead, you don't see anything. Can I see anything behind us? You look behind and you see your companions. 
Up to the sides? You kind of start looking up. And that's when you see it. Oh. Stepping over this area is a gigantic form. <laughs> Must be 15, 20 feet tall, walking across the top of these pillars. They are dense and tall, and if you were up above and were big enough, you could almost just use them as a causeway. But there is some sort of lumbering, dusk-skinned giant. <laughs> His skin looks like the color of old ash. And he walks along, and he has this giant stone club slung over his shoulder. And as he steps by, you can see that the end of it is wrapped in chains. And at the oh. end of those chains, you see like the skulls of like, there's like a skull of like a cow and an elk. And one of them just has a, a knot of chains filled with human skulls. And it's just like a giant flail of skulls. And he's just stomping overhead. And it's just causing everything around you to shake. What do you do? This invisibility idea. sphere. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the answer is no. What? <laughs> he does not see you. Oh, okay. Oh. Because Toriel oh. immediately oh. begins casting a spell, <laughs> and 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 a moment later, you are all cloaked in invisibility. Oh wow. Uh, underneath Tariel. that close, stick, yeah, stick that, that boulder with the trees. Is there like an opening or anything that we can can't see? see anything from here? It's can a little ways away. Closer. Let's go. We can we move move with this? Yeah, we can move. Okay. So okay. when you Should cast we... the spell, the giant who just kind of stepped over stops. Oh. <sighs> And just kind of looks around. He, his face looks kind of malformed and scarred. Part of his nose is gone. And he just kind of looks around. He doesn't have much in the way of hair. It's stringy and greasy. And he just kind of looks about. This guy is gigantic. He just kind of gazes down in there and kind of... <sighs> and just kind of stomps forward. Not seeing anything. He moves on. Okay, we just have to move really slowly. Okay. Maybe wait until he's well within, well outside of earshot. There's no reason to move now. We can wait until he's gone. Yes. Yes. And then we got to look for. Him. Yeah. And we have to stick this really way. close okay. together. This way. That's fine. You just all shuffle. wait a few moments and then cautiously begin to move forward. Where are you going? I'm the boulder. up, up mm -hmm. towards the boulder, but I want to start looking around for any sort of. Uh, possible entrance. Okay. You begin climbing up the side of the, the valley to make your way up towards this strange boulder. Um, and as you grow closer and closer to it, you notice that um, that ridge line is kind of on the edge of a bit of a drop off, um, right? So not on the side you're on, but on the other side, there's a bit of a drop off. It's not a valley or anything like that. It's nothing so grandiose. It's more like just a crack in the mountain. And it kind of leads down into a bit of a, a shadowy cleft. I mean, everything around here is kind of a shadowy cleft, but <laughs> this is more shadowy and more clefty than the others. Um, but you don't really see anything down that way. It just looks like darkness, but it is the only thing around here that doesn't just look like rock. I guess you did say to go below, right? It, it's definitely something underneath, so I guess we should head in that direction. Yes. But Maybe. keep an eye out, everyone. Mm -hmm. You just sort of tap mm -hmm. at your shield and on your back and just maybe a little light. Will that affect the invisibility? Oh. Uh, How long does the invisibility last for? 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Oh. Okay. Um, you've burned through almost all of it by the time you get here. It takes you quite a bit to navigate your way up here. I think at this point we're probably okay. Depending. Probably. Yeah, as long as, I mean, I can cast it two more times. But then that's that's it. That's let fine. let me be at the front with you. Of course. Just so I can tell them if they if if these people are, are scared, then I, I can at least tell them that Serenray brought us to them. That's a great idea. I, I want them to, to be calmed. All right, let us go. Hopefully. As you climb uh, kind of up over the ridge and down into it, the sphere, the invisibility sphere does end. It takes you like almost fifteen minutes just to scramble down that. And as you make your way closer to it. Um, you draw to 
I don't know, you're making your way back towards that cleft, and maybe you're about 40 feet away when um, from either side, the rocks suddenly kind of shift. And you hear a voice call out. Who the hell are you? Uh, my name is Linnaeus. Hello. Um, I am here with my friends. We were sent here by Sarah and Ray. She, she gave me a prayer and a vision and, uh, well, she rather spoke through me uh, and told me to come here with my friends. <laughs> Standing up from the middle of the rocky basin, um, you see a small diminutive form. Can you make a, uh, can you make me a diplomacy check after that? Sure. Come on, man, okay? <laughs> we, in the box. <laughs> I don't have a coin. Oh, you're no. all out. Oh, I'm sorry, all right. Can I, I gift that's what you were going for it. Nope. Just, uh, it's a 16. A 16? I've also cast light on my shield, and I'm, I'm, I've been holding it up in front of me. Uh-huh. The form stands up. You see a half one. Uh -huh. hmm. Please, we we mean you no harm. Who um he stands up and and by standing up, I mean his back is covered in like you're not sure what it is, but it looks like rock. So that when he was hunkered down, he just looked like part of the rock. Oh, nice. Um and he kind of stands up with this outlandish costume on. <laughs> And as he's doing that, there's like two or three others who are standing up, and they all have bows drawn. Ooh, we do not mean you any harm. <laughs> he's like, that has to be the most ridiculous cover story I've ever heard. It no. is the truth. It is, what uh, did she say? It is the truth. She said, three trees upon one stone shall light the way, way to the veil beneath. <laughs> he kind of laughs. He's kind of a genuine laugh. You know, that's... That's just ridiculous, which is why I know it, it can't possibly be cultists. Yeah. Hello, friends. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, the cultists have better cover stories than that. That was awful. Sorry. It's, I mean, no, that's but it's really the truth. truth but I can show you later. I can, I can maybe try and read another room. I'm not sure if it's going to work. But we are not, as a, as a general rule, very good at lying. Some of us better than others, but oh, for the most part, not really good. I'm not good. <laughs> the halfling kind of looks at you, and he's like, all right, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We can't stay out here. Okay. This place is not safe. I don't know if you know that. Let's oh, get know. out of here. We know. Okay. He uh, uh, takes you inside this cleft, and he goes uh, uh, down kind of a shadowy corridor, um, which kind of looks like it just dead ends. And he walks up to the rock face, and he kind of messes around with some of the rocks. And as he does so, uh, the this kind of piece of stone wall moves. And he kind of goes up to it and pushes it out of the way. Uh, he goes inside and he unstraps, unhooks this kind of rock costume from himself. And uh, as he does so, you, it becomes clear it's like made out of like paper mache or something. Like it's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and he kind of sets it down and he's wearing uh, a chain. And he, he's just kind of right this way to Undervale. Oh. And you see a halfling. Oh. This is him. <laughs> this is this is this is this is uh, this is the halfling. And uh, he's like, Undervale. Right this way. I'm, I'm Landry Tethertine. Landry, very lovely to meet you. Uh, as Tethertine. I said, do all halflings have names that start with L? <laughs> he looks at you and he's like, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, there's plenty of us here. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, what, what on earth are you doing in the Umbral Basin? You well. are going to want to sit down for this. Blundering about here. And he kind of, as he's escorting you down, he's taking you down into these warm chambers deep beneath the ground. Uh, and you get into this, this kind of large vault where you can hear people singing uh, down uh, in the depths. Uh, and you can see a, a group of folks dancing. Uh, around a, uh, a open uh, fire pit, and uh, there's some uh, folks off to one side tapping a keg, and it looks like they're preparing some food. Ooh. And he's like, "I can't imagine what would draw a traveler to this area. You're lucky that we were up there looking for that giant, uh, making sure he didn't get too close. Otherwise, we wouldn't have seen you at all." Oh well, that's. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, we it... are actually. Uh... We normally don't bother with sentries this time of year. It's too cold. Nobody travels this way. Well, it's a very long story. We're on a mission. Um, huh. 
and, and it we, will take us in the darkest places. We really <laughs> didn't have much of a choice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I uh, I can't wait to hear it. So, uh, welcome, welcome. I, I'd like to welcome you to Undervale. Uh, I'm, uh, as I said, I'm Landry Tethertine, and I'm the, uh, I am the, uh, well, I, I guess I'm the leader here. Uh, as much as we have one, to be honest, we tend to work together and we agree on things, and that's that's just how it operates. That's the only way you survive here. Mm -hmm. It's not a friendly place, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Might I ask what you are doing here, sir? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if I want to give it all away. I mean, we're here doing important uh, humanitarian aid. We are we are helping helping some folk. Really? How can I help? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, you seem to be going in the wrong direction. We we normally help people get out. Oh no, we're oh. going in. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that mostly what we do is we're here to help uh, help people get out of Nadal and 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 Chelyax as well. Those who managed to make it through the Menador Mountains, uh, we we provide safe passage for them. We we help guide some of them up. And as he's doing this, he's walking you up to the 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 tavern, and he's like, "I sure bet you are all thirsty." Yes, very hungry. I would like alcohol. He kind of walks up, and he's like, "Now, now, we'll certainly give you that, but let's get you something warm in you first. It's awfully cold out there. And uh, he goes back to the one of the fires and, and gets off a kettle. Uh, and he uh, walks up, uh, sets it down on the counter. Uh, he uh, gets out a skin and uh, adds to it some some cooler milk. And you can tell that it's full of milk. Mm. Uh, and then he breaks. He it gets from beneath the bar a large uh, kind of block of chocolate and begins shaving it off into mm. it. And he's like, so I believe you owe me a story. And I am interested to hear, why, why on Galarian are you making your way in into Nadal? <laughs> what? And uh, to be honest, dressed like that. And he looks at all of you. You realize that the moment you get about ten miles that way, when you when you get out of this area with this horrible place, you're going to be down in the basin. And the moment the patrols see you, they're going to arrest you dressed like that. You you realize that, right? No. Well, we, well what, what? we are. What should we be wearing? <laughs> Not that, and he's pointing at like Saren Ray's holy oh, symbol and Shallon's holy symbol. He's like, that will get you flayed at the least. <laughs> yeah, boy, you just thought you were just gonna walk in with that? No, oh, we weren't no, expecting we... that, but we were headed to the Red One, looking for the shell. He, his to... eyes go wide, what? <laughs> <laughs> like Told we you. said, it is a very long story. It's a very story. long story. It's... Nicky, let's take it away. Well, um... You narrate him the tale. Uh, we're not going to make you go through the whole thing. It's a long tale at this point. And, and I do recaps at the start of every episode. So uh, he can just go back and watch those. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, so, uh, <laughs> so he, uh, he like listens to your tale and he's like, and as he's doing this, he puts way too much chocolate in because he's absent-minded. I want that one. There's no thing. Well, he's putting it into the kettle so it can be served to all of oh. them. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. And, and, uh, and after, as I'm, I'm like, just. <laughs> uh, it's not bad. I mean, it's not the best, yeah. the best chocolate you've ever had, but yeah. it's not bad. It's not bad. And uh, he finishes kind of doing that, and he's stirring it up, and he, he breaks out some mugs, and he's like, I, listen, I, I. You seem like great people, and and you know I I I I, I don't really know you. I mean, you just got here. You you arrived on my doorstep, and and me and my folk here, you know, we're we're just trying to eke out a living here and and make sure that we can get people out that need to get out because the this place isn't exactly friendly. We understand. We're, you know, uh, we we're, we're we're part of what's called the the Bellflower Network, and 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 our job is to to help those who are looking for liberty and and freedom, mm. and. Uh, you know, uh, that that's what we're doing here. And, uh, you know, you, like I said, you, you seem like really great folk. Uh, but I'm, I got to tell you, uh, you're going to die if you go to Ridwan. They, they're going to skin you, and uh, then they're going to boil you, and then maybe they'll let you die. But maybe not. That's how these people operate. <laughs> and and that's, that's a fun evening for them. <laughs> we... He's at this. He's kind of pouring out the hot cocoa into uh, into uh, mugs, and he kind of starts passing around. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but you're you're on a suicide mission. We've been told that. <laughs> we are aware, but we cannot just sit idly by and let this happen. We must do something. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Well, uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Um, is I mean, there any, sneaking into, into Ridwan? Is there anything you can tell us about it might help our journey? You don't sneak into dangerous. Ridwan. It's, People it's, sneak out. It's the, <laughs> the almost never. Almost. Yeah, almost never. Who has? Like once in the past 10 years. Are they know? No, they left. They got out of here as soon as possible. They had half their fingers left. That, that, was, that was a victory for them. Sarah really told me when I asked her how to get into Ridwan, she said, baptism of pain will give you sanctuary. Do you have any idea what that means? Huh. Listen, he kind of says, listen, you're all probably exhausted. It's been a long day. Uh, uh, I think it's nearly night. And he kind of looks over at like uh, an, an old time uh, water clock thing that, that kind of helps measure time. And uh, he's like, yeah, listen, you, you should probably get some rest. We, we got we got plenty of places for you to sleep. And then tomorrow, I'll, uh, listen, I'll try and talk you out of this. Can but I, why don't you get some rest? Can I help at all? Is anyone injured or? No, no, no. we're all good. Okay. No, 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 we, we're, 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 we're good here. This place is safe. Down here is safe. The shadows don't come down here. I don't know why, but that's why we that's why we set up camp here. Too much joy around here. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> if you feel like uh, having a song and dance, we'll be we'll be down there for a bit tonight. But it's it's getting a little late, and people will probably be turning in. Okay. Uh, just okay. one more cup of chocolate. A bit. <laughs> He's like, well, there's a bit left. A little more. Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> oh. I, I'll I'll make sure that you got uh, you got a bed to sleep in, and then uh, you know, I mean, he just like. You're gonna die. And he kind of walks away. At least we'll die trying. Okay. You know? If you've known what we've seen. <laughs> some of the halflings come, and uh, and it is almost entirely halflings down here. Hmm. There are some travelers and, and whatnot, but uh, they're, they're not all halflings, and they're like... Strangely enough, Bliss feels slightly uncomfortable. They've never been around this many halflings before. <laughs> <laughs> like, truly never. And they're, and they're, they're all like super pally toward you. Ooh. They're all like, hey! A cousin, <laughs> and they—they they are all like super friendly, and they're like, "Hey, you want to dance?" Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, of course, that sounds great. The oh, <laughs> Ariel's playing, I'll dance, which I will, and I kick off my boots and go dance a fine elven jig. You're able to uh, uh, kick off your shoes and relax a bit in the evening. You get a bit of food in you, but eventually, you're just exhausted. The day has been long, long march and trek here, uh, especially after your sleep was so rudely interrupted last night and Ooh, tell me uh, about it. the entire travel during the day was a bit of a mess. Mm. You eventually are shown to uh, uh, an alcove where there are some comfortable mats on the floor where you can get some rest and, and, and sleep in, in relative peace and comfort. You wake up the next morning and sitting at the edge of your alcove is... Uh, your good friend Landry, and he's sitting there. He's got a chair turned around, and he's got his he's got his elbows on it, and he looks at all of you. Morning. Good morning, Landry. <sighs> morning, morning. How you all? How are you all feeling? You sleep well? Much better. There, Thank you. Good. good, good, good. Didn't didn't dance too hard. Didn't didn't drink too much. No. Oh, it's good, 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 good. How long were you watching us sleep? <laughs> ah, I just got here. Good. <laughs> you gonna turn back? I don't no. think we, we have. Wasn't our intention, no. We cannot. He's like he kind of with a bit of a wry smile. I didn't think you would. <laughs> I tried. Even if we die, at least we'll have died fighting for something that mattered. Well, on the upside, at least you got determination. On the downside. You're probably going to die. You yeah, said, that said that many times. I did. Yes. But I'm going to do what I can to make sure that don't happen. Well, okay. Thank you. You said something last night. Which, which part? The baptism in pain. Oh, oh yes. Sarah Sparked nice. my memory. And I had to go check a book and a calendar and figure out even what day it is. It's kind of hard to keep track here. We are six days away from the baptism in midnight. Oh, what's oh. that? It's a holy day. 
on holiday. In Ridwan, where followers from all around Nadal oh. trek there oh. to step through the gate and visit their god. Oh. 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 Which means the town is going to have a whole bunch of travelers and visitors going there. And you see him kind of wave, and a uh, halfling woman comes over. Slung over her arms are a bunch of gray and black robes. Throughout her lips are a bunch of pins that she's got. She's holding in her <laughs> lips. She's got a tape measure. And he's like, so, let's get you dressed up as cultists. And that is where I'm in in today's game. <laughs> I want to thank you all for watching and encourage you to tune in next week for another exciting session. If you want to learn more about this story, the characters, or the Pathfinder game, please visit knightsofeverflame.com. There, you can find a synopsis of our previous episodes, stats for all of the characters, and some Knights of Everflame gear to deck you out for your next adventure. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Coming up on Knights of Everflame. That's where you're going. That's Ridwan. <sighs> Looks horrifying. Yeah, they'll probably skin you. <laughs> okay, well, uh, not if I skin them first. This is bad. Shall we have a sit and have a little pray for ourselves? <laughs> oh. Is it another? I yeah. rolled two natural ones. I'm impressed. <laughs> there are such sights you will see. I cannot wait. Can I shoot him? <laughs> you, you just want to pop up and shoot him? Yep. You hear at the back of your head. Yeah. Shut up, you! I'm doing it because I want to, not because you're telling me to. 26 on the next hit. Crit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm letting the back of your head. You hear, they're taking them. Those are ours. Ugh. That was awful. Oh, this is disgusting. God. I hope they, I hope, all uh, that, and I hope, let's get up here very, very soon. Oh God, this is very upsetting. This is um, terrible. Hey, listen, I, I'm, I'm here to give. In terms of evil levels, I don't like this.